Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're here to play some Soul Forge Fusion, published by um, Stone Blade Entertainment. I believe is the publisher for this one. Uh, this is a hybrid deck game. Soul Forge Fusion, the hybrid deck game. I don't know why it's a hybrid of something else. I'm not sure. Maybe because you put one half deck together with another half deck, but I, I just call that a sandwich. I, I don't know. It's more like just like a mishy mash, you know, it should be like Soul Forge Fusion, the mishy mash game. You just mash your decks together, but then. But not your whole deck. Not, no, yeah, that's the thing. It's like kind of like. It's kind of lying, like, I, 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 when I've heard about this game, it said you just take two half decks and, and, and kind of put them together, and they, 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 they join, they, they like, like a hybrid. I, I don't know why it's a hybrid, but anyways. Uh, maybe it runs on electricity and gas at the same time. <laughs> maybe the Soul Forge is like, soul is like sun, you know, like, kind of energy from the sun, but then forged with like, I don't know, coal and, and gas and natural and, you know, like that kind of like bad energy and good energy. I, I, and they, they hybrid together and the, the game is made in a inside of a hybrid vehicle. I, I delivered with a hybrid truck. I, I don't I don't know. Yeah, Bob says, Bob says, do you plug it in to charge it up like a hybrid? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello to you joining live. Hello to you joining later. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm just killing time till people show up. That's that's what we do here. <laughs> so I'm running out of material, right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I got. That's all I got. Um, I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you guys. I don't expect a lot of viewers to show up to this stream. And I understand why. Now, if you love this game and you're watching this, share this video. Share it with people who might be interested in watching Soul Forge because even, even someone who has Soul Forge and watch this video, because more people that watch this video, share this video, like this video, means other eyeballs will see it because YouTube's algorithm will put it in front of other people who watch stuff on our channel. And I just honestly think the interest for this game is not very good in the industry. And I know why. And I say it all the time. Every time we play like a two player head to head card game, I said it when I played Epic the Card Game. I said it at first when I played Keyforge. I was like, why does this game exist? There's no need for this, but it looked cool. Like the idea was cool. Um, there are so many games that have come out since Magic the Gathering, which I've never played. Yeah, yeah, shots fired. I've never played Magic, never cared to, never wanted to. Um, yeah, I was there when I was like 15 in high school. I had friends who were playing it. And I was just like, man, you guys, that game is like so expensive. What are you doing? You're crazy chasing opening packs and stuff. It's like, that's children's stuff. They're, they're like, it's like gambling for kids. But um, yeah, I stayed away from it. Now here I am playing games like this as I'm older. So what did I know? Um, but I've never played Magic, but I have played a lot of uh, living card games and competitively. I've played Game of Thrones, the living card game, first and second edition, Warhammer Conquest, Netrunner, Legend of the Five Rings. I don't know. What else is there? There's a whole bunch. Oh, Keyforge. Keyforge, weird. Also has the word forge in it. Why, why is that? Um, but for those that don't know, this game uh, comes from the designer of Magic the Gathering, uh, Richard Garfield. And also uh, the designer of... I have it right here. The designer of Bad Beats, Justin Gary. We have this game. We do have this game. This game is from Stoneblade Entertainment. I thought I'd never played a Stoneblade Entertainment game before, but I have. And I bought this many years ago when my daughter was like seven. And we played it because this game is basically a children's version of Coup. It basically rips off Coup, but makes it for children. I love Coup. I love playing Coup on the floor, uh, waiting for the convention hall to open at Gen Con. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite pastimes. A uh, great little party game, but they made a child's version about like not eating your food and get, feeding it to the dog and who's lying and all that stuff. Played it with my daughter. Loved it. Loved it. But anyways, uh, Justin Gary designed this, but really what Justin Gary's known for and what he only admits to being designing is uh, 
I don't know if it's like the only other game he's designed, but uh, Ascension, which I've never played. I love deck building games, just never cared for it. It never looked, never looked too appealing to me. It just looked kind of amateur. Um, but also Shards of Infinity, which I don't know, but that's his highest ranked game. Hmm. Um, but they keep advertising that this guy made Ascension and Richard Garfield made Magic the Gathering and Keyforge, and they came together. Two great minds, but it's like... Uh, Richard Garfield, I can say that about. I don't know Justin Gary. Uh, I've never played Ascension, so I can't comment. But I have played Bad Beats, and it, it was just a ripoff of another game, so I don't know. <laughs> but I did love it, <laughs> because it was of a game I loved. Uh, but not sure what else to say there. But that's that's the history behind this. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's, it's very generic. This game is generic. It's uh, kind of like Epic the Card Game, very generic flavor on it. Uh, it's trying to be looking kind of like an old school collectible card game. Definitely going after the Magic the Gathering audience for sure. Going after the Keyforge audience, even though it's like the same designer as Keyforge. Um, but it was assumed Keyforge was like dying. So Soulforge is actually, uh, Richard Garfield worked with Justin Gary and they kind of did the whole algorithm thing. So every deck is unique, but it's not called a unique deck game because I'm sure Fantasy Flight games owned the rights to that and sold the rights to that to Ghost Galaxy, so they can't call this a another unique game from uh, Richard Garfield. But of course they paid, they put his name on it, um, and it's the same idea, every deck is unique, and every, or sorry, every half deck is unique, but each half deck has to be joined together to make a full deck and play the game, which we will show you today. We're gonna do a full playthrough of this game. And all this stuff I'm talking about, this game does not look interesting, okay? This is my impression too. When I first saw it, I'm like, okay, this looks kind of neat, but I'm a sucker for these kind of games, so I want to try it. I went to Gen Con, they had a whole booth dedicated to this. People were demoing it, the buzz was there. I walked up, I said, I'm interested in your game, tell me about it. Someone explained it to me, and then they gave us uh, a starter kit, a booster box, and two play mats. And yes, this just looks like a mess of color down here, but... Um, I do appreciate that. So full disclosure, we were provided what you're seeing here from the publisher, but they did not tell us you have to play it or you have to say this or anything. We're not being paid to do this. Um, and I want to just try it. I want to try it. And I tried it. And my friends, looks can be deceiving. And never judge a book by its cover is the lesson I've learned today. Maybe you won't learn that. Maybe I'm missing something here. But man, this game looks generic AF. It's got that feeling of Epic the Card Game from Wise Wizard Games, which looks generic AF, but was super fun, and I loved it. I love Epic the Card Game. I love what it, was, what it stood for, trying to be a CCG in a cheap little box you can put in your pocket, and super replayable. This is one they're going to keep coming out with sets, so anyone who's like... I don't need another CCG. I don't need to be opening blind boxes. Uh, I was tricked by Keyforge and bought a thousand decks thinking this wasn't a CCG, but it turned out I was, instead of just chasing down cards, I was chasing down full boxes of cards. <laughs> they tricked me. Yeah, Keyforge so cheap. You just buy a deck and boom, you're in the tournament. You could win the whole thing. You don't need to chase down rares or anything. No, you did. You need to chase down the better decks, the decks that had the cards in it you're looking for. This game is no different. You will be chasing down, if you're trying to play this competitively, you will be chasing down half decks that have the cards in it you want, trying to find other half decks that have the cards in it you want to try to put together the meta, uh, the meta top decks for sure. And we, we've learned this, we've learned this for sure. Um, but yes, and they're also toting this game. Uh, I did remember at my first Gen Con, I'm pretty sure 2013, Maybe it was 2014, I don't remember. It was one of those early ones. I remember seeing Soulforge on computer monitors or tablets at a booth. They were showing this digital game off. And then this digital game went away and it was called Soulforge. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. And I think this is like the second iteration of that game. But this one is actually physical with an afterthought digital tacked on. Like they have a tabletop simulator official mod but to me, that says, like, you know, everybody and their brother nowadays makes a tabletop simulator mod to show off their prototype of a game. Like, that's not an official digital version to me. Like, that's lazy. That's not something that's going to make this game succeed. I want to talk more about that later. I could go off on, forever on that. But 
I hope this company actually puts some money down and gets a, a proper game developer to make a proper app for them. You know, like I can play Wingspan digitally. I can play Root digitally. You know, I can play Game of Thrones, the board game second edition and a nice digital app that knows the rules, keeps track of everything. And this game feels like a digital game. There's stuff in here that's fiddly, should be tracked digitally. And you could tell this game was di designed with digital in mind or came from a digital game. And they're trying to do it physical, but like, I, I don't, you'll see. I'll show you and explain it as we play it. We're going to go through a game or two here, show you the whole thing. And then I'll give you like my full thoughts. And they're not all negative or anything like that. These are just things that are like bugging me, but um, we'll play it. We'll go over it. And uh, we'll just focus today on the starter set. Uh, and the four half decks we have from that. Dice Meister says, what is your favorite dungeon crawler? Uh, not the stream for that. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm here to watch you play a collectible card game. I'm curious what your favorite dungeon crawler is. Uh, I, think, I think to be fair, they did say that, uh, is that the same picture? I think, yeah, I think you changed your name. Um, hi, live for the first uh, time. So I think this is the first time that they, they're welcome. live. Welcome. So. Uh, Welcome. My favorite dungeon crawler? I don't know. I, I'm not sure right now. It would depend if I'm looking for beer and pretzel dungeon crawler, serious dungeon crawler, long campaign dungeon crawler, one-off dungeon crawler. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. We did answer this question a few weeks, yeah, or like maybe depends. a few months back. And... There's a lot of good dungeon crawlers, and they all do something different. Yeah. If, I, if it's October near Halloween, my favorite dungeon crawler would be Mansion Madness 2nd Edition. Because that's what I want to play. That's what I'm in the mood for. You know? If I got Kyle over and we're playing some three-player, I'm going to pick something a little lighter. Maybe something app-driven mm. for my dungeon crawler. You know, if it's just me and Mel, maybe I'll pick something like Sword and Sorcery, you know? Get meaty with it, you know? Start cooking the brains, getting fiddly. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. And we a lot like... of them are forgettable. A lot of them are memorable for different reasons. Yeah, there's a lot though that we like. But here's the beauty. I don't have to pick my favorite. <laughs> I play whatever the hell one I want, and I have so many to play, and I will get more, and I will play more. Yeah, so, we will always keep playing yeah, yeah. colors. I hate when it's like, just pick one. It's like, no, I don't have to. That's the beauty of this. I don't have to. <laughs> get out of here. If you can only pick one, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to do your own research and get that information and that answer for yourself. If you're looking for me to tell you which one to buy, you're in the wrong place. I can give you tons of info, though. But don't buy something just because I say it's my favorite. That's silly. Don't, don't ever do that. Make your own decisions. I think some people come in and ask those questions for some sort of guide on maybe where they should look. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I need to do a list, though, of, like, my top whatever. But it's hard. I don't want to, like, rank one top. But I could just do ten of my favorite or something and put them in, like, random order. I don't know. The problem then comes, so you make your list, let's pretend tomorrow. I know, and, and changes then a week later. And then later we play a new game, and you're like, oh, that would have been on my list now. Yeah. I really like I know, game. but it's always that way. Yeah. You just got to make new lists. <laughs> which is annoying. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, so we're here to play Soulbird Fusion, hybrid deck game uh, from Stoneblade Entertainment. And uh, let's talk a bit more about it. So, uh, Soulforge Fusion. Here's the BGG page. Supposedly you can play four players. I didn't know it had a four player mode. Is that? I, I didn't see that when I clicked the rules or read through the rules or anything, but sure. Best with two players. I don't know. I thought it was only two players. Yeah, I thought it was only two players as well. It must be like a team thing. Sit yeah. beside each other and then like, I, I don't know. But I like, don't know. I don't do like do when they with do the that. Wings? How do you fight things in the lane across from you if you only if you have four players? I, I don't know, this might be an error. Uh weight 2.5 out of 5. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um well yeah. It was a Kickstarter. Okay. Oh, funded in 26 minutes. Oh, oh my god, I gotta back it. Mm -hmm. That must be that must be huge to fund in 26 minutes. Oh, but when you can set your own goal line, maybe that's not so surprising or so great. Fake funding goals. Losers. All right. Uh, let's see here. Campaign. Uh, so it did. I, is this US? Probably US. Probably US. I think it's US. Yeah, I'm not signed in. So it didn't change it to Canadian dollars, but uh, so it did okay. It, nice. It's like, okay. For, for a game no one's heard of. Another two-player card game that you collect packs of. You know, there's a new one of those every week. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. 
Uh, oh, there's my decks. Uh, there's the how to play that I've linked down below. Uh, there's videos. There are rules. There's a web page. I've linked all that in the video description if you're interested about this game. You'll be more interested, I, I promise you, by the end of it. I, I don't sound too excited. There's, there's lots of problems, but there, there's some good stuff. There's some good stuff. You'll see. Um, but yeah, you can scan your deck just like a Keyforge deck. Same idea. They're doing the same stuff. Um, so I have my deck scanned in. Here's the decks we're playing with today. Okay, you can scan them in. Uh, again, the, the way to play this game online is through, officially, is through a Tabletop Simulator mod. Um, you can download your decks to Tabletop Simulator. But for those that don't know, Tabletop Simulator is just kind of like a, kind of like a physics engine with like a very bad interface. And uh, it's, I don't know, not the way I prefer to play my board games or my card games, but uh, it exists. There's a way. If you need to play with someone across, you know, across the way, you can play this game on Tabletop Simulator. I have no interest in doing that. One day, I hope this game is successful enough, they actually put down the money and make a proper app. The same way I was ranting forever, that Keyforge, to survive, I said it right from the beginning, I'm scanning QR codes, I'm putting them in a database, imagine I could play this game online with anyone anywhere, without having to use a fan-made browser, you know, and even, even the browser-based games made by fans are better than like Tabletop Simulator. Because at least they have like the rules and they count the health and all that kind of stuff, uh, uh, which is nice. But yeah, I'm sure there's a fan out there who they could pay to make at least a web browser version so people could play it on, you know, Android and iOS and stuff. Um, that would be neat. But who knows? Maybe they didn't raise enough money for that stuff. Maybe, maybe they don't make enough money for that. I don't know. But uh, if you want to compete with the big boys, that's what you got to do. Um, but Keyforge was able to do fine without it, but I still think Keyforge like it almost died and it's who knows if it's dead or really or not right because they didn't have an app when they should have they had everyone scanning decks in and if they had an official way to play that thing online like we see like pokemon magic the gathering hearthstone they all have ways that people play easy on any device maybe not pokemon you can't play it on anything but like pc i think but they need that stuff right and keyforge needed that stuff too and they didn't. And then COVID came and basically like crushed the game. But imagine they could have kept going online if they had an official thing where you're scanning in your decks. And when I heard about this game and they're doing the same scanning thing, straight up the same thing, scan your decks in online. There's no like official app to track health and like playing cards and automating it and making the rules easy and, and, and dealing with the upkeep, you know? Like, yeah, it's easy to shuffle stuff on Tabletop Simulator, but you know, like, it's just lazy, lazy, lazy. Um, that's, that's what I think. But that's me. That's me. All right. Um, so yeah. There's also some lore uh, to the game. You can find that on the same website. Okay. Um, you can read all about it. There was supposedly a tournament at Gen Con. Mm -hmm. Oh. I, I didn't know that. That's cool. Maybe. Maybe there was. I don't know. I didn't know that. I don't know. Okay. Now that we get all that crap out of the way, let's get down to the game. All right. We are two players playing some cards and we're trying to take each other's life total of 50 down to zero. I know it doesn't sound exciting. I'm telling you nothing about this game was that exciting. But you gotta play it. You gotta play it. All right, let me show you. Let me show you, okay? You're here. Here's the deal. We got this starter kit. Okay, this starter kit, again, amateur is a word you're gonna hear a lot today. Uh, I don't know, this starter kit, you open it up and they give you the paper play mats. I know, I don't know why this is acceptable, I think, because Magic does it too, uh, but paper play mats, that's a no-no. But this game needs mats, okay? You need mats, so I guess it's better than having nothing because this is a lane-based combat. It matters where you are in the lane and positions. And similar to Flesh and Blood, there's like a hundred places that cards and decks and upgrade piles and all that are. And Flesh and Blood is the same thing. You like kind of need to play on a mat to kind of keep everything clean, like your equipment in that game and your, um, you know, the, the, the resources you're spending, your deck, your banished zone, your discard pile separate from your, uh, what is the archive called in that one? Is it an archive in Flesh and Blood? I forget what it's called. So there's like spots for everything. This game has tons of spots for everything too. So they give you some paper mats. Uh, but like, 
<laughs> oh, no. Anyways. <laughs> I have the legacy version. <laughs> so we don't need those once you level up to real mats. Um, but they did give us proper neoprene mats. I honestly wouldn't play their game without them. I can't do it. I can't play a game that needs so position matters and not have the mat. Uh, so this 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 starter deck uh, just comes with this insert, has some ways to kind of track positive and minus health and numbers are always changing. Um, and these are kind of lame. I, I use these a little bit and then I was like, no thanks. But they even say in the rules, like you could use dice if you want. And when I started using dice, I went like, yeah, that's the only way to play, but it's still a little fiddly. Because health changes and, and, and attack values change and they're persistent from turn to turn. And it feels like very digital, very digital. Like it, it's so fiddly on the table. It's like, this is not proper like tabletop gaming, like 101 design, you know? But then when you find out like, oh, it's an, it's from an old app and they're tr probably trying to do a real digital game version. And if the digital version tracked your health and attack values constantly changing on all the oh, characters yeah. in play, that's totally fine. Yeah. And that's like a perfect digital thing. It would make sense, yeah. But in physical card gaming, it's like, no one's really done that because it's kind of like lame. But it's not as bad as you think. Uh, so the starter deck, uh, starter pack, comes with these four half decks. And it's one for each faction, okay? One for each faction. And where is it? Uh, on here is your deck list. And they do the whole same thing as Keyforge. Again, same designer. So they're like, I don't know, this Stoneblade was just like, yeah, we want our own Keyforge, Richard. Can you make one for us too? That's different, but still the same. Uh, so this, it does the whole thing. Like this is your Forgeborn, Forgeborn's name. Um, who's like kind of like the leader of your army or whatever, has abilities. Uh, and then they do like a, an algorithmic, uh, you know, um, generated name. So this name of the deck is unique. The deck list is unique. These little symbols on this side are rarities. So it tells you who's in the deck. And you're like, wait, these decks are only like, what is that? 10 cards? Yeah, 10 cards. No, it's because it's 10 cards and there's three levels to each. And that's where it started to hook me. This is where I was, this is what sold me on even touching this game. Was my addiction from being a kid playing Final Fantasy games and other games where you get experience, you level up, you get more powerful. I got hooked on that in video games, fell in love with it in board gaming, uh, and it does it in this game. So during the game cards you choose to play, they level up. So there is three brood fangs in this purple deck, three dark heart sorcerers, like a level one, a level two, and a level three. And throughout the game, every time you play, only some of them will level up. Oh yeah. You can't play every card. So every time you play, you kind of make decisions based on what shows up in your hand, what you level up and what you play. And it's a unique deck. This is from the alpha set. So if you're watching this later, you're playing with the beta set, I'm better than you. <laughs> Cause I, I'm alpha set. So <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> Um, but anyways, uh, or I should say ball in, ball in, uh, yeah. So, uh, this is your Forgeborn. And when you play cycles of the game, your Forgeborn kind of has abilities. So the starter set comes with these. It also comes with some tokens. I believe these all came from here. Uh, there are minion tokens in the game, similar to a lot of other CCGs, TCGs. They have little minion creatures. Okay. You can have an Oak Father for the green faction. You can have a Wisp is like their lower level minion. Every faction has some minions. So we got a Wisp, Oak Father, Mindless Zombie, Zombie Brute. So they kind of give you an idea of what's going on here. Like this is nature and animals in the green. So epic, the card game. Like it reminds me exactly. <laughs> like that one has the green faction, has dinosaurs and animals in it. As a purple faction here, we got zombies and sorcery and magic and stuff. Uh, in the red deck is like burn. Yeah. and damage and fighting and like offense so it's like it, i don't know they just follow the same formula every time with all these games it's so funny but it feels comfortable right in the blue deck robots robots scientists technology <laughs> trickery breaking some of the rules with leveling up and stuff at least in our half decks but again we have only played with our starter set that only has four half decks we have a booster box here and this booster kit has another four half decks in it, okay? So every time you buy a starter set or a booster box, you're getting, at least with this first set, I don't know, they have other sets planned supposedly. And this also is coming to retail early fall 2022 is what I found Googling. 
Um, so I have a blue half deck, a purple half deck, a red, and a green that come in a booster set. And to build a deck, you just mix two of them together, hence the hybrid thing. I was just joking before, but... Um, so I can take a purple and a green, put these two together, there's my deck for my game, okay? And every time you play, you have two Forgeborn, but you only pick one. So you'll see us, we don't know which ones are playing today out of these four, but like, uh, or who is playing each one. But we're gonna do random draw for the first game at least, and we'll get two of these, and then you pick one of your Forgeborn to use for that game. So I picture like in a tournament, based on your opponent or something maybe, you kind of might switch it up based on the matchup, or maybe just take the one that's obvious for what's in the two decks and synergizes the best. But they have very powerful abilities on them. And these are unique. So these heroes, I think the same hero, I've seen this hero before. I've seen all these heroes before, looking up online. But I think you can get a different version of this that has slightly different abilities and different numbers and things. I think. I think even the heroes are unique. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, but these are unopened. And they come with a little token, you get more little minions in them. But these are new half decks. And, and I don't think we'll play with these today, but we could in a future stream if there's interest. Um, I do want to. <laughs> I, maybe we do that after. No, but we'll see. But we've, we've played this we've game played, yeah. like four or five times now. We've tr each tried all the different mixes kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but then you throw these in. So out of this, what do you have? Six different combinations? No. No. You can mix the red one, two, three different ways. So it's 12 different combinations? I can't even think right now. Um, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, you can mix these decks. So if you just have one starter set or one booster set, you could, you know, mix them up or whatever. But again, I think the beauty in this game is people are going to be hunting down the best half deck that goes good with the other one, you know? Like if you have beasts in both half, and then like synergize off your Forgeborn that, that cares about beasts, you know? Mm -hmm. or And stuff like that. Or like warriors or robots and those kind of things. I guess just a note, the only thing that you cannot do is mix two half decks of the same color. Yeah, no, and so, I was going to get to that. Oh, I was gonna sorry. Say that. Yeah, sorry, I totally forgot. No, 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 I, I was okay. trying to get there with my thoughts, but uh, yeah, that's the only rule. You can't mix the same faction. Yeah, which makes sense. So no two reds, no two greens, no two blue, no two purple. I'm assuming maybe in future sets they'll even have different colors, but these are the four colors I think that only exist in the first set. I'm assuming they'll come out with different colors the same way Keyforge came out with new factions that kind of do things a little different, but some stuff the same, you know, and keep mixing it around. Um, but yeah, the, each, each half deck's unique. So I, I don't know the name of these ones. I don't know the QR code uh, because they're still sealed. So maybe we can look at those later or something. But um, I like that because then if they ever did some any kind of draft or anything, nobody can actually know what's inside the deck and pick like that. Oh, Right? You just know one card. Yeah, exactly. So nobody could actually look at it and go, oh, this has my favorite card in it, or this is the broken card, or something. Mm -hmm. I like it. If they're going to use them for turn. So again, every name is unique. So for example, I have an Oros deck that's called Tur Tetarian's Herders, which is going to be unique to mine. Oh yeah, and the flavor text is unique. It's also uh, generated, you know, electronically or whatever. Um, the Dark Forge spoke to Oros in his dreams. You won't save them again. Not without me. You're too weak. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just randomly generate his stuff too. This is just cheesy fun. I don't know. But they did not randomly generate the back of the decks like Keyforge. That was probably outside of the budget. Um, so they just say Soulforge Fusion on the back. I like it. Because you're, mix you're mixing two decks. So you have to have the same back. Obviously. <laughs> No, I want them different. <laughs> then, I want them different. Then you have to sleeve them. Yeah. So, this is going to get compared to Keyforge a lot. A, because that's Forge in the name, has the same designer. As the whole algorithm thing is trying to do the whole unique deck thing. The, the real difference from a high level view is you get to pick two half decks to mix. In Keyforge, you just open the deck, it's all together. But truly, you're doing the same thing. You were chasing down the proper mix of which factions you wanted, which few cards in the same deck you wanted. And sometimes you get a Keyforge deck that had, you know, a Shadows lineup of cards, and you're like, ah, this just doesn't work well with the Sanctum that's in here. Uh, let me go keep looking for another Shadows Sanctum deck that has what I want and maybe pairs with this and has, you know, a board reset in it or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So you kind of hunt down that stuff. 
and you can find it. And there's there's lots of decks out there that had the combos in that you're looking for. Some of them perform better than others. Some of them have better synergies and have more amber on them or whatever. But same thing kind of here, except for the difference is you get to choose your two halves. So in Keyforge, you have your three factions in a deck. You don't get to choose that they're together. You have to hunt for them. But in this, you'd still be hunting for the cards within the two factions you want to jam together. But the cool part is you pick the two factions you're jamming together and the cards that are in them based on what you can open, what you can find, what you can buy online, whatever, right? So there's that one little extra deck configuration. So I know a lot of people crapped on Keyforge because they're like, I like to build my decks. I like to put in whatever. But from a tournament card game player, going to tournaments and seeing the same five decks over and over and having teams of players who are playing the top meta deck and you literally know when you play the next player that you know they're their friend you're going to play the exact same lineup of cards because they all practiced together and came up with the same deck to bring to the tournament and it's like so boring when you play like a seven rounds of a tournament one day and five of the games are against the same opponents like the same exact deck so boring so stupid um uh, yeah, so when Keyforge, why I fell in love with it was just like every deck was different. Even when you see like one card come out on the board in a tournament, you're like, you don't know what else is in there. It's crazy. Eventually, you could look at their deck lists at the high level and stuff, but I love that. I love just like everyone was kind of forced to bring different stuff. Yeah, everyone could show up with like a card, you know, a deck that has these three cards in it, but it's like, what are the other cards that are in there? Oh, so good. But this kind of has that too except for you can choose the two halves. But it's still, what's in my red deck and what's in your red deck could be completely different, which is, they are different. They could be close, but they're never 100% the same. Which is so neat. So neat. So neat. But yeah, it's just that extra step. And I'm not even talking about gameplay. Like, gameplay this game is like, another one of those, like, tons of characters on the board just battling each other, trying to destroy each other. Yeah. But you'll see. You'll see. It, it's cool. It's cool. All right. Okay. So uh, I'm going to throw these tokens uh, just off to the side. We'll obviously put the two that you need kind of near you um, for now. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. There's a little reference card that comes in the starter kit. It doesn't have every keyword on it. There's a ton. You can check out the rules link in the video description to see all the keywords and stuff. Um, but yeah, it has some. There's armor in the game. There's breakthrough. Yeah, a lot of. Man, a lot of things you see in other card games, it's the same stuff, but um, let's show you how this game's a little different. Okay, so uh, let's do it like this. Let's take a green card, a purple card, a red card, and a blue card. I'm going to shuffle them, and Mel's going to pick two at random, and those are going to be her two half decks she's playing with, and I'm going to pick the other two, because it's the only options left. Uh, and I have no choice. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to play. But once you own a whole bunch of these, I see the addiction here. And I know it from Keyforge. I remember it from playing Sealed and opening stuff and choosing which deck you're... Man, remember those formats when they give you three fresh new decks? Oh, you yeah. open them, you have like a few minutes to look through them. And choose which and one. And choose which one you're going to start the tournament with. And, it has, and once it gets so many losses, it's eliminated yep. and you can pick the next one. Oh my god, that was amazing. I love playing that in Key 4 It was so fun. But I can see this doing the same kind of thing, like, you know, picking. You can just play with your other players playing a tournament, and you're, like, choosing, like, you know, you, you eliminate half decks based on whatever, and, you know, from a pool, and oh my god. One this... of the things that I could see being a really fun thing to do as well is if you did have a lot of packs and multiple choices. Drafting, it, right? Not Well, that, or to play uh, the same. So I play a red and blue, and you play against a red and blue. Like, mm. things like that as well to see. I think that'd be fun. Like to, but they should be different. They, should, they exactly, might be a different, be different. theme. Like, yeah, yeah. And, you, and I would choose different cards that I'm leveling up than you mm. are. Just, just to show. Now, we did a problem. We sleeved all these ones, but these ones aren't sleeved, so we can't. Unless, yeah. unless, like, I take this red and blue and play you against this red and blue after. Oh, like unsleeved, unsleeved. Yeah. yeah okay. No, unsleeved and sleeved is fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe we try that. We'll Something, see. Something, I don't know. We'll see how long the game takes, if there's anyone even watching, if anyone's even interested. Um, uh, there's people watching right now. So if are there, is there anyone here? There's people here. They're chatting amongst themselves. Are you here. sure? <laughs> I, I don't think anyone's here. If you're here, let me know. Say hello. <laughs> also, happy Monday. And I was curious, did anyone play any cool games over the weekend? 
I would like to know in the chat. What cool game, the coolest game you played on the weekend? If you didn't play anything, I'm sorry to hear that. I guess if you didn't play anything, you'd just not answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because we just haven't streamed in a couple days, but... Uh, or what's the game, best game you played in the last week? We just, didn't, we just missed Sunday. Last stream was Oh, Saturday. true. We were playing We just Saturday. one day we had off. We took one day off from stream. It feels like I haven't streamed in so long. <laughs> David says, Dungeon Universalis. I've heard of that, but I can't yeah. picture we, it we in my head. We didn't look into that before. Huh. Uh, Rick D says, I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that way. Meister played Sword and Sorcery. What are you asking me what my favorite dungeon crawler is for if you're playing that? Oh, uh, they did say oh, they did. apologize if their English was bad. They were just trying to see your uh, case to no get your worries, case no of it. They're from Germany. So, oh, yeah, ask welcome. your questions. No worries. Welcome. Hello from Canada. Yeah. No, no, it's all good. Larry says Lord of the Rings LCG because of RGT. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Alisman and Marvel Dice Throne. Heaven, interesting. Oh, Stacey played the first two scenarios of Arkham Horror LCG, The Forgotten Age. Nice. Ooh. Hopefully that doesn't make you not want to play the game ever. Uh, that, <laughs> that, one's a little, that one's a little different, but I do, I do love it. I do love The Forgotten Age. It's, it's, its, own, it's its own monster. So cool. Oh, David says Soul Forge Fusion is awesome. Listen. You didn't say it with all the exclamation points that he put. Hold on, hold on. So, David's saying Soul Forge Fusion is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Mortal Kombat. <laughs> so I think Tiny's trying to get ahead of us so that Tiny can watch us play because he played uh, Oswar in Chapter Four and Five. Oh, spicy! Yeah, we Tiny. have Chapter Five scheduled. Mel's working on painting it right now. Yep. I think you painted a, a character. I can swap in. Yep, I did. So tune in Spoiler. for that one. It's already scheduled. <laughs> you can set a reminder for our Oswar playthrough uh, for the next next in the campaign if you're looking for it. I schedule a whole bunch of streams uh, for the next week, so you can go set reminders for the ones that you're interested in. I just want to say there's some new names that are popping up in the chat here, so welcome everybody. Troublemakers. Hello, hello. All troublemakers. <laughs> Lloyd's played Wrath of the Lich King. Classic. Wow. World of Warcraft. You're playing... Oh, people still playing World of Warcraft? Cool. I'm just joking. I know people are. I see it on Twitch getting played. That's crazy to me. Oh, and Mark play what Mark uh Mark and his wife played a Jurassic World Legacy, also trying to get ahead of us so that you can watch. We also got our next episode <laughs> of that scheduled. Spoiler filled. I got an email from the publisher that sent us um the uh Funko Games that sent us Jurassic World the Legacy of Isla Nublar. I was so excited for it, we just jumped into it like right away. <laughs> A week later, they send me the email uh, of the guidelines for how to handle reviewing the game and how to not talk about anything spoiler. I replied back like, excuse me, man. Uh, we've already played like six hours of it on stream. Spoil the crab out of it. That's what we do here. I'm Rob. I don't know if you know us. This is what we do. So you sent us the game. And if you didn't know what we did, I explained it. But that wasn't like, the first game they sent us. No, but so the, prob the problem I realized was she was taking over for the person that sent it to us was totally different who I was having a conversation <laughs> with. But I was like, uh, sorry, spoilers. <laughs> we went through the first episode. And they were like, oh, okay, my bad. Yeah, yeah, do what you want. It's all good. <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> They're like, this is what you need to say. This is how you review the game. I'm like, no, no, we do what we want here. <laughs> That's not how this, this deal works. Nice try, though. Nice try. Um, nice. But yeah. As with this game, as with any game, when a publisher sends us a game, we, we, I'm open, I'm honest, I'll explain everything that I, I like, dislike about the game as we kind of play it and go through it. Um, but I'll talk more about the game. Positives coming later. I know I shouldn't be talking about it all right now, but... You do this every time. I'm just trying to let people know that, like, yes, there is generic stuff about this game. It seems on paper, like, why do we need another game like this? But, like, once you play it, I'm telling you, it's good stuff. Uh, like, spoilers, I really like the game. I really like this game so far. But again, five games in, keep that in mind. Does this have the same power to keep me, like, you know, buying more decks, going to tournaments, all that kind of stuff, like, like Keyforge did, or Game of Thrones did, or L5R did, you know? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, Edward has it right. Edward says, but you're more of a game player than a game reviewer, right? Correct. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. We'll give our thoughts, but we don't review them. The problem is, even when I'm right from the beginning, I'm like, I never want to do reviews. There's a thousand channels to do reviews. Nobody's taking the time to actually play full, large games, learn the complex games, 
play through them long enough, no matter how many viewers they get, that's what inspired me to do the channel, was to tackle the games that were getting no love on YouTube. Since COVID, uh, every grandma and, and every nephew you know who has a phone now does a YouTube channel about board games. There's like thousands of them, right? We've been around for like uh, almost 10 years doing this. Um, and, and everyone's doing it now. So now you can find playthroughs being streamed all over the place. Like every week someone emails me saying, Rob, how do you do what you do? I want to start a new channel. I want to copy what you do. And you know, even channels that did edited content, come and watch our channel, hang out in the chat and then go change their format to be like our format. Um, we influence a lot of people and, 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 and since ever starting, I try to stick that way and people still come in the chat going, Rob, we need to know your thoughts. Uh, Mel, did you like the game? Kyle, what are your thoughts on it? What are your favorite games? What do you think? Everyone wants to know. So then I was just like, all right, we'll just tell you. I tried to stay out of it. I'm not reviewing it. I'm just showing you. I'm demoing it. But then we're just kind of giving our thoughts. And we just kind of always done that. I think, it's, of... I think it's the thing. We play so many games. So yeah. people just kind of listen to and things people... that we like or don't like about yeah. a game. Yeah. So, I don't know. And people like, I uh, mean, we have almost 100 videos on Keyforge when we f over one year that we were playing that game. And people will ask, like, oh, well, how do you think about this compared to that game, you know, that you played on the channel or this other game you played on the channel. So I'll give my two cents, but please, like, use your own judgment based on what you see in the gameplay. But yeah, I, I don't normally review stuff because mm -hmm. who cares what I think, right? Just play it yourself or, or watch it and kind of judge. Okay. Yeah, we don't get it when people are like, tell us what you think. It's like, wait, why? Who cares what I think? Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> But then some people say like, oh, I have similar taste to you or some have similar taste to me. All right. Right. Which makes sense. Well, let's play this bad boy. I'll take this one. Okay. And this one. This is to show you like any two half decks, as long as they're not the same color, will work together. So Mel's playing a... I am playing red and green. Oh, you got red. I like red. I wanted purple, but that's fine. Oh, well, sorry. I'm taking this one. So I've only played blue once. Uh, I've played purple once, I think. <laughs> Maybe twice. I don't know. So I th I've only played purple once, so you played it more. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, it's uh, on the bottom. Yeah, on the bottom. Okay, okay, watch this. Ready to have your mind blown? Are you ready to have your mind blown? No, seriously. I know. Okay. So what I do now, so let's say I open these decks. Let's say we open these and we're playing, you know, like Keyforge. We used to do that on stream. We'd like cr on Twitch and, and YouTube, we'd crack open decks. Literally, just not even look at them. We just literally open them, shuffle them, put them face down and play. I remember you used to do crazy stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that was like my favorite thing. But you could literally crack these open, just like Keyforge, and just take two and, and jam them together. But you don't jam the whole things together, okay? And you don't play with both of the Forgeborn. You have to pick one, like I said before. Yeah. So I look at this, I see Cersei, okay? And she has this thing that she can destroy one of my creatures. So we play only four cycles, four trips through your deck, kind of. Okay, you literally play the game. It's very structured, very structured. And you kind of go through the flow of the game and you go through the game one cycle of your deck. You don't do any of these abilities. Cycle two, you now have opened this ability on your Forgeborn. And now I could, as a free action, I could destroy one of your creatures to give a creature plus five attack, plus five health. And that's like permanent to that creature as long as they're around. And it, per it persists through the game. Sometimes it's only for a turn, but it'll tell you that. Then on the third cycle through the deck, so the second cycle starts after three rounds of the game. Okay. This starts after six rounds, after nine rounds, and then it goes up to 12 rounds. If by the end of the 12 rounds, somebody is not dead, down to zero health, okay, you know, your health goes down, down to zero, and you're, you, you know, it's whoever has the most health wins at the end of 12 rounds, pretty sure, yes. It's very weird. It took me a bit to get my head wrapped around this freaking game. I was like, what is going on here? But it makes sense once you played a few times. It's like, oh, it's just, it's just nice. Yeah, it, it makes just sense works. for sure. But it's like trying to explain it and learn it. I was like, this, how am I going to explain this to people if they understand and not be confused? But the best way I do that is by just showing you guys through gameplay. And then it makes sense, right? Then it clicks. That's how it works for me. Um, so on the, on the third cycle, I could, I get this ability, but I don't have this ability anymore, right? These are one time per cycle abilities that can be triggered. And you have three turns in a cycle to trigger it on. You don't have to trigger it if you don't want to. But once it's triggered, you've exhausted your Forgeborn and it's done. And what we do sometimes to track which cycle we're in, we just kind of use this little token that came with our game. And then when we've used the ability, we've just cover it up. 
we're on the next cycle we do this so i'm showing you this right now and you're like what are you talking about man because this is a decision you need to make before you start playing is which of my two forgeborn i want to play with and what i figured is maybe you look through the deck of course if you go to a tournament you own the deck you know what you put together and you saved it in your file and whatever but uh you could look through your deck so you just need to look through 10 cards in each deck to kind of know what they're doing but then you kind of wait what do the level two versions of those cards do and what do the level three versions of those cards do okay look for some synergies look for some things does it synergize more with this guy? Then you look through this one and you're like, hmm, what are the synergies here? Okay, does it work good with this one? So you might decide on your Forgeborn randomly based on who has the cooler art, mm -hmm. uh, based on which abilities look nice to you, or based on how these abilities either synergize or cover weaknesses with your deck, which is so cool, okay? This is not the mind blowing part yet, okay? But I choose one of these. I don't, I don't know which one to choose. Um, I'll, I'll choose Cersei, okay? She's going to be my Forgeborn. You pick one. And don't pick based on what you just saw me do, Mel. Don't, I don't even know on. what yours does. I know, I'm just joking. I don't remember. But I'm going to put Cersei up here. Cersei's just chilling. She's going to be there, and these powers are available to me once we start into cycle two. I think I'm going to take that one. Yeah. Oros? Yeah. So Mel is going to start with Oros who has a shapeshift ability when we're in cycle two, give a creature plus three attack, plus three health, and it has all three creature types this turn. I'm assuming all of this is just for the turn because there's no period or comma or anything after the health buff. But uh, yeah, this growth aura, give your creatures plus four, you gain four health, and that you gain means your actual health, the player's health meter. Okay, creatures have their own health, but so does the player, as I have on the screen here, the 50 health, okay? Uh, and then bar skin, give up to two of your creatures, 12 armor. Armor is, uh, this is this turn, so this is temporary for the turn only. Right. And w there are three turns in a cycle, and four cycles in a game. Okay? So this turn is literally only one turn. I'll show you what a turn is uh, when we get there. So that's what Mel has chosen. Okay. Okay. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, so the next thing, here's the mind-blowing part. Okay, okay. So like I said, you don't jam the decks together. You have level one cards, okay, in your deck. You have creatures and you have spells. The minions are tokens on the side. They never go into your deck. They come into play. And they only come into play if you have cards in your deck that call upon minions. They're not always in the deck. But there are decks focused and factions focused on minions and stuff. Every faction has minions. Some small minions, big minions. I'm assuming small minions are on the lower level cards. Big minions start coming to play later in the game. This game does have the standard buildup, kind of, of most collectible card games. But these creatures, okay? So we have creatures. Creatures have attack in the top left, health in the top right. And check out this little preview here of what the health is and the attack is at level 2 and level 3. So you don't have to go look if you don't want to. Again, the abilities change too, but you're not sure. And again, this the name of this is linked to like the abilities and stuff somehow. I, I don't know how that is, but... Um, but this guy, if I can get him to level 3, he's a 24 attack, 26 health. And I'll show you here. So this is the level 1. Okay, He has 1 armor. And regular armor... Just goes on them. I use dice. I use blue dice. Uh, I put armor on him. And when he gets hit, it breaks the armor. And the armor re refreshes at the end of a turn. I think that's how Keyforge did it too, right? Uh, I can't remember. Mobility lets me move around. There's a whole bunch of keywords, like I said. Okay, watch. I'm going to blow your mind. So you want, you want to level this guy up every time you play a card. If I play this guy onto the field, I have to go grab the level 2 version and put it into my discard pile. And when this version that's on the board dies, it goes to a banish zone, it's out of the game, I never see it again. And eventually when I cycle back through my deck, hopefully I draw into, and maybe we'll play the next version of him. So the next version, if I can find it here. Nope, I'm looking in the wrong half deck. Okay, so I'm looking in the level twos here. And I go find this guy. 
And this feels like this should be digitally, right? This doing oh, this yeah. physically feels like this is such a digital game. And they're just kind of doing things in the physical that are so weird. It's so cool. Okay. So this guy comes in. Now here's the level two version. As it shows here, there's a two. Okay. It has a different border color. Blues are level two. There's the name on the bottom of the deck. The Watchman of Crested Archivist or Archivist or whatever. Just because they could, they did. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, so this guy has five health now. Oh, he has two armor now. Oh, so much better. So much better. Okay, okay. But look, I know what the level three is coming out as. 24, 26. Okay. So let's find the level three version of this guy. And this is only if I ever played the level two to upgrade this guy. And if I played it too late, I might not see it on another cycle of the deck. Because you don't literally draw your, all your cards from your deck. There's five at the end of the deck that you don't draw every time you go through the deck, which is crazy to me. But it's so cool. It's so, it's like interesting. This game intrigues me very much. Um, but now it's four armor, still has mobility. But look at this, 24 and 26. Oh my God. That's busted. Oh my God. But the problem is, and the cool part is, when I played this guy at the beginning of the game, these stats suck. They suck, but it's like, is it worth the payoff? Is it worth the risk of trying to get this guy leveled up to three to get an actual decent character at the end? And not just decent, this guy's OP, okay? OP. But it's just fun. I don't know, it's just fun. So for example, let me show you another level three. This guy's level three version is only a six, a six attack 10. But if we go backwards, let's find his level two. His two is a four ten, but you see the ability keeps changing, right? So if this guy comes in and replaces the creature, he gets plus 10 attack. The level 2 only gives plus 6. And let's find the level 1 of War Machine. This guy comes in and he does the 4, but he's only a 210. See, it tells you here, eventually it'll be a 410, a 610. So not as crazy, but he does make up for it with these abilities. But that's why the other guy is so cool, because he comes in a 1-1. One, one. So it's like neat, right? It's interesting, very interesting. And at first I was like, this is silly. Like, why isn't this game just digital only doing silly stuff like this, leveling up on the fly? And it's funny, the designer, one of the designers who did Ascension, the deck building game, it's funny because his most famous game that made him his bucks is probably Ascension because it has 43,000 expansions. It's been around for like 10, 12 years, 13 years, something crazy. And at the end of the game, cleanup is like cleaning up after a deck building game. Like after you're done playing Star Realms yeah. or Hero Realms, you know, that kind of thing, you got to sort all the cards out or you're playing Marvel Legendary or whatever, and you have to sort the cards out, find the starter cards, separate them all out. That's what happens here. We're going to be jamming in some of these leveled up cards into the deck, but at the end of the game, you got to sort them all out again, especially if you want to separate the decks too, right? Uh, yeah. I don't find it that difficult, mm -hmm. but yeah, it is. That's just you weird. To, yeah, you have to do it. Like digitally, it makes sense because you just like close the app, you're yeah. done playing. <laughs> so There's no mess. Yeah, exactly. No mess. All right. So, uh, eh, so cool. All right. So let's get to it. Uh, so I'm going to take all my level three cards. Okay. I'm taking all my level three cards from purple and from blue. I don't know the faction names. I can't, I don't care, but they're going here in my level three pile. Okay. I just put them face up. I don't know if that's right. That's what we do. Who cares? Maybe in a tournament I wouldn't if, I don't know if you have to. Then I'm going to take all my level two cards. Okay, all the blue bordered cards from each half deck. I'm going to put those in a little stack here. And it doesn't matter what order they're in. You, you have to go look through them and find the card as you play. Now here's the, here, now we're getting to the hybrid deck part. Okay, you take 10 cards that are level one from your purple, 10 cards from your, le your level one blue in my case, or your two half decks. And you put them together. Oh, you are really jamming two decks together. Just two small decks. Just hire a maid to clean up the decks. Now we're talking. Was that a was that a Kickstarter upgrade to get a maid with the game to to, un, to sort your decks out when you're done? But yeah, that's totally an acceptable thing in deck building, right? But in in tournament card games, to have to sit there after like cleaning up and sorting out between games is weird. But oh, did you break one? No, no, no. There's just something inside, like a little. Piece of oh, stuff. did you mark a card so you know when no. you see it? So like draw it? Okay. I'm getting it out. This is inside, so I feel like... Uh, successful Geek, that's a question for yourself, my friend. I, li I like the way you're talking to yourself in the chat, asking yourself, is this a winner over Keyforge? <laughs> I like that. 
I like that how you think like that's a, a definitive answer that's, that's across the board. No, that's something that's, that's the answer for you and everyone's gonna have a different answer to that question. But yeah. Well, that's right. funny. But yeah, don't even try. <laughs> don't even try it, Successful Geek. I know what you're doing. Oh, you're asking everyone but you, Rob. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna have to do the work and do the research yourself. Uh, again, you can play this online on Tabletop Simulator. I think there's a way to play it free. Anyone who does play on Tabletop Simulator, you can go on there, I believe, and just play like uh, sample games and stuff. So you can try this game out. No excuses. And again, going back to the start of the stream, when you're telling me which game would you pick one or the other, I don't have to pick and I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm gonna play both and I don't care. Yeah, one may be more interesting sometimes. Maybe one has a better um, meta or a player base in my area. That's the one I tend to play. If neither of them have a player base in my area, kind of don't care about either game, to be honest, because they're really best when you start playing tons of other players, in my opinion, start playing tournaments, start playing local game nights against people. Uh, changing up the player across the table in these kind of games also helps with the replayability, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just changing the deck is only half the formula. Oh, you're bored playing against me, is what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I like different challenges. I like people who approach the game different. I'm just kidding. I like people who bring different types of cards and like different factions and stuff, you know? It's just, just fun. Kidding. I like jumping and going through the jungle. <laughs> Do you want to cut this at all already? Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, I'm going to just shuffle a bit more. Okay, so now we're going to get into the gameplay uh, and kind of explain the game as we go. So we shuffle this, this is only my level one cards. There's 20 cards in here, okay? 20 level one cards, 10 from each faction, each half deck I've jammed together. Remember, you can't put two of the same factions half decks together. So I have purple and blue, you have green and red. I don't know the names, but that's what it is, okay? You put your deck here, okay? Your discard pile's here, and the discard pile will be ever evolving, okay? Your banished zone's over here. This is like the first player token kind of thing. Only one person will have their uh, soul forge or forge something. Just their their forge, forge. Just their forge. Their forge lit or not lit. And that tells you who's like the aggressive player, who's the first player, uh, who gets to kind of put their characters usually in kind of like a fighting stance. And the other player gets to play second and more of a defensive stance. So you have these five lanes. We're battling in lanes here. Okay. You can only ever have one card or one uh, creature in each lane. And all that's in your deck are creatures and spells. This game doesn't have attachments. It's just creatures and spells, at least in this set. I guess I could always add that kind of stuff later. I don't know, but okay. So in these lanes, this is where the battles are going to happen. So you can put creatures in the front, but only, generally only, if you are the first player and it's your, you're going first, okay? If I'm not first player, I most cases have to put them in the back. There are keywords that override that, of course, in any game. Tons of keywords break the rules, okay? But this is general, okay? A creature in the front, when we get to combat, is going to fight whatever's on the other side. You can only have one creature on your side in each lane. I can never have it like this, okay? At least not in this version of the game of this set. I'm sure they'll break all this stuff as sets come out, trying to add mechanics and make the game more, you know, or like keywords that yeah. they can go behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows what they could do with future sets. Obviously, the first set, you keep it kind of straightforward and simple. Otherwise, your game's never going to get off the ground, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so something is in the front, and if there's something across the way, they will fight each other in combat. All combat and all lanes is simultaneous, okay? We'll just resolve it one at a time, obvious. You're not going to do it all at the same time. It's just get crazy, but it technically, in game terms, happens all simultaneous. Uh, these two creatures would fight each other. They would initiate combat uh, for being in the front, and they damage each other. If I'm going second, this character would be back here defending. This character, because it's in the front, would initiate combat. They'd still hit each other. And that damage generally goes, and the character blocks it. There's no spillover unless the keyword breakthrough is involved. Or the keyword stealth, I think, is involved. It goes through defenders. I think it goes it, through defenders only if they're in the bottom. Only if they're in the back, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. If yeah. the two characters are like this, they're both in the defensive stance in the back of the row, then no fight happens. Nothing happens. Okay? And you'll see that in the combat. So we basically kind of have like a turn of planning 
on the turn where we each take an action twice. So you get one action to do a paid single action, which is basically just playing a card or banishing a card and upgrading it. So I could play a spell, goes to my banish pile, I find the upgrade, I put it to my discard pile. If I play a creature, I put it on the board, it could replace a creature. It can go, if I'm second, go behind and knock the creature of this in front, whatever. Um, and then I find the upgrade, I put the upgrade in my discard pile. When the creature leaves play, it goes in my banish pile, never to be touched again. Okay. I do one action, and there are free actions like the character ability here. There are some free actions on cards like activating or moving with mobility. Okay. Um, but you uh, just basically do one action as the first player. So if Mel was first player in this situation, she would do one action, play a card or just throw a card in the banish zone to upgrade it. So if there's really, if there was really no card you could play, you could just banish a card to upgrade it for later if it didn't make sense at the time. But that's your, that's your paid action, your one action. Then it goes to the other player, they do an action. And then back to the first player for, for the final action of that turn. So each player only gets two actions on the turn. You'll see that. Then we go to combat. Then we kind of like do cleanup and pass first player and you'll see, okay? So it's, it's easiest to show it because like explaining it, it's like none of it makes sense. Yeah, exactly. It's weird. It's weird, but it's, it's, it's cool. Um, do we want to roll for first? Sure. Oh no. I'll roll it on the board. Six. Well, that's, uh, yeah, you're first. I'm first. Okay. So my forge is lit. One, two, Mine's three. not. So what you do is you draw five cards. Okay. I'm now a quarter through my deck. Now, Mel's first player, she gets to do an action. And again, remember, we're only in the first cycle, so you do not have any abilities yet on your Forgeborn or whatever that you can use yet. So you just kind of ignore this for now, and they're just going to sit there off to the side. So Mel is looking through her five cards, okay? The best way I can explain this decision, what it feels like, is mechanically it's not the same as, but this is pretty much uh, kind of like Key Forge kind of like Marvel Champions, where you can't play every card in your hand. And generally, there are some ways to kind of mess with that. But you're picking one card to play, okay? I play one card on my one action. I play another card on my second action. The rest of the cards in my hand just go in my discard pile. I may never play them in the whole game. They'll shuffle around in the next cycle. Maybe I play some of them then. It depends what they show up with in hand. But how I can relate to this, it feels a lot like Keyforge, kind of, because you're only picking two cards. You can never, like, most of the time can never play your whole hand unless you've literally held one faction and it lined up. Yeah. But usually in Keyforge, you pick a faction, you play only the few cards in hand, fight with the things that are from that faction. In this, it's kind of more like Marvel Champions or any game that you have to pay with cards in your hand to play. Because really what you're doing is you're playing two cards on your turn, kind of, in most turns, and you're paying with with the rest of your cards going to your discard pile. Same way Marvel Champions works, anyone plays that, that popular competitive or cooperative card game is you, you know, you have your big hand of cards and you're like, oh, you have to pay the cost to play cards with other cards. That's basically what you're doing here, but the cards have no cost. You just play whatever, but you're only allowed to play two cards from your hand of five, generally. Okay, and the rest go in your discard pile. So you have that same puzzly feel of staring at your hand of five cards and you, you're thinking, so Mel's thinking right now, what card works for me right now? Or if, if she's playing big brain game, which th this, <laughs> this, this takes a little bit, but this is where I got hooked. Once you realize, once you realize that the card you play now gets upgraded to level two in the first cycle, and we're going through four cycles of the deck, assuming somebody doesn't go down to zero health first, you know? Okay. If we get through the full, full, or at least two or three cycles, the odds of me seeing that level two card are going to be increased. And maybe I'll be able to even get it to level three. But you can only get a handful of cards usually up to that level three. And you might not even see them late game if you don't draw into them or get them at the right time to combo with other cards. So you might pick two half decks to play together. Let's say you're going to play your friend, play it at board game night or at the, at the board game store, sorry, your cafe or whatever, or you're going to a tournament at a convention, whatever it is, you bring your two half decks. But those first five cards, every five cards you draw, you can only play two. And it's like, what helps me now? Or what helps me later? Or what both? And what will help me in this matchup? 
you know, what will combo with what I see. Sometimes you see two cards that come up together with the other three cards, and those cards are the best too. Sometimes those same two cards come up in the exact same game with the exact same two half decks, but the other three cards in your hand, there's two cards in there that all of a sudden seem way more juicier right now, or in the long run, because you saw them early, or you saw them at the time you saw them. And you have to make those kind of long-term decisions and short-term decisions, and it's super fun. Like, it's kind of like in some games you play where you're like, uh, Flesh and Blood has this. Flesh and Blood, where early in the game, you can play cards as resources, and they go to the bottom of your deck. Yeah. There was some other game that did this too, where you could put cards at the bottom of the deck, but I think it might have only one faction, but you would draw back in and get to them later, so you try to put them in and kind of organize. I think it was Warhammer Conquest, one of, one of the factions there had it. But the idea of making choices at the beginning to set you up late game, Flesh and Blood, awesome for that. Mm -hmm. The whole idea your deck gets smaller and smaller and you start putting cards in as resources. And if you put the big resource cards in, they're kind of weaker attack cards for later. But if you put big attack cards in now for lower resources at the beginning of the game, you'll have better stuff showing up later in the game. That's what's happening in this game. So if you like that from like Flesh and Blood or other games that like you're kind of seeding the late game, but at the risk you might not make it to the late game. <laughs> that's always a, yeah. It is so freaking clever. I, I don't know. It's neat. So neat. Anyways, Mel, back to you. But that's what's going through your head. I, I, it's so neat. Okay, I am going to play a Steadfast Warhound here. So I, uh, I have the Forge, so they are going in the front. I will find this card in my level twos. Uh, David, you can have less than 20 cards in your deck at certain points in the game if you if you play your level threes, right? And they can't level up to fours. Yeah, I find... And you do it fast enough. I find that has yeah. happened before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get your deck less than 20 and throw it off. Oh, oh, but he's saying or less. Or, oh, or less. Or yeah. less. Than, no, he's saying Soulforge is great because you will never have more than 20 cards in your deck or less than 20. Oh, I see. Or less than 20. So you'll always see the level one cards four times, sometimes five. No, not true. No, because you don't go through your whole deck the first David, time. You, you do, do you not stop when you have five cards left in your deck? Or am I reading old rules or something? You, you don't always go through your whole deck. You never go through your whole deck. There is the gamble you will not draw into all your cards. Not at the beginning of a phase. Oh, you're just saying at the start. You're just saying at the start. I see. Okay, sorry, David. You're saying at the start, I think is what you mean. Oops, sorry. I see what you mean. Like right at the very beginning, we're always at 20. Oh, yes. But the whole seeing your whole deck, it's not guaranteed. You, you will, there could sometimes just based on shuffle luck, you will, there'll be cards you see never in a game or, or not until like your third or four, third cycle. Or, and then or, at that point, it's too late. Or, or the game doesn't make it to four cycles. Oh, yeah. Like, or, you know, you're only three cycles in, you know? So yeah, you, you, there's a risk. You upgrade cards, you may not see them later. That, that's the thing. All right. What did you do, Mel? what did you do? Well, I thought, I thought for some, so I played this and I found my level two. This is as a deploy ability. If this replaced a creature, which it did not deal damage to a creature. Oh, that's some dogs for adoption. Oh, that's cute. Some some steadfast warhounds. Oh, well, eventually. So Mel, what she did. You played there, I think, right? I did, yep. She immediately went and found her level two version and put it in her discard pile. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now it's over to me. All I do is yapping instead of looking at my cards. So okay. here we go. Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. I'm going to play this. Uh, I don't know what the hell this thing is, but uh, some kind of Dread Maw uh, who has stealth. So when he is attacking, if the other uh, opponent on the other side is in a defensive stance, uh, it will hit the player. 
Destroy another one of your creatures to give this plus two attack, plus two health. Okay. Hmm. Awesome. So how does it activate work, Mel? <coughs> is it, how, how do I activate this card? Let me show you. Activate is free. Mm -hmm. To activate a card, to do that ability, I have to exhaust it. The creature still defends, still attacks, everything's normal. You just exhaust creatures in this game to show that you've used their like activate ability, which is free. Okay. To do on your turn. Before or after your paid action. So obviously I'm not going to do that. I don't have any other creatures to destroy. But I'm going to play this guy because I'm going second. He goes in the back row here. And I'm trying... Actually, you know what? I'm going to put him right here in the middle. I, I don't care about this guy. This guy's only attacking for four. I don't care if he hits me. I want to have this guy threatening you. Because if you attack for four, you kill my three health creature. And my creature hits you for four and kills yours. So like I could go toe to toe. But I don't feel like it. I'm going to make you try to maybe answer me now or later. Uh, you do whatever. But uh, that's how I'm doing it. I don't know if this is proper. Again, please don't come here to learn <laughs> how to play this game and win. Or the proper strategies. We're, again, this is probably our uh, sixth, fifth or sixth game of this. We're just here to show you this cool game. And give you our thoughts on it after a few early plays. But um, I just want to show you some of the cool things that happen in this neat. Hopefully it makes sense and you can decide whether it's for you or not. You need to find your creature. Oh, yes. Uh, that's where I was going. Yeah. So then I go find this Dreadmaw guy. Where is he? Okay. Here's the level two version. Okay. It gives a little bit more. It's got a bit more hits. I don't know. He's not the greatest. Let me look at my other cards here. Yeah. Not many good options here. I don't think this is a good color pairing with these two decks. So I put this in my discard pile later to shuffle back in and see that. Okay. Go ahead. You play dinosaur. Oh no. Um, What's he do? I'm sorry, I didn't get that far. It's a Uteradon Mauler. When uh, this damages a player, you may give another creature plus two plus two. Deploy. If this replaces a creature, no. So we don't worry about any of this deploy action. Deploys just happen when it actually comes in play. And sometimes it doesn't do it just because the, there's, like, you know, situations. Yep. All right. Okay. Let's show them how spells work. I'm going to play Soul Reap. I'm going to deal three damage to a creature. I gain three health. Then, if I have a beast in play, <gasps> I have a beast in play. I am going to deal three damage to a player, and I gain three health. So let's, how this works, this goes to the banish zone after it's done resolving. I'll just put it here for now. I have to go find this other version of Soul Reap. And here's the level two version that's going to go in my deck. It does five damage and I gain five health. Ooh, look at this. So uh, that's going to go in there for later. Maybe I see it. Maybe I play it. Maybe I don't. This one goes in the banish zone, but I'm going to deal three damage to this creature, get rid of it. I gain three health. Then if I have a beast in play, I'm going to deal three damage to the other player. And I gain three health. Wow. That's right. You can go wow. above 50. I, I don't know. I don't know. Be here all night if I uh, keep healing. Well, I don't think I have heal, so you're fine. I'm sure. But again, there's the limits <laughs> of the game. And there's something I didn't talk about, but if you are tied for health at the end of the 12 turns or four cycles, you go to a sudden death. And as soon as somebody's health changes from that tie, whoever's the higher health wins. So if you just have a way to like just reduce the other player, just like it was Soul Reap, I, I would have won right there. Like, you know what I mean? You could save, if you're playing like, I, I picture like super competitive tournament games where it's like getting down the wire, you might save something like that <laughs> just to hold it in your pocket for sudden death. But well, the uh, hard thing is you might not get it. You can't hold cards, right? You have to just I, dis discard yeah. your hand. So, and at first that annoyed the hell out of me that I can't hold stuff to, to build up super crazy combo turns. But the whole idea is you're just building up your deck and upgrading it for hopefully super turns later. It's very weird. Not being able to hold cards is like kind of you think it sucks, but it's kind of refreshing yeah. that it doesn't let you do that. It, it's just different, which is cool. It's what makes this game kind of unique. All right. Okay, that's our two cards. So we did both of our actions? Uh, yeah. All right, so let's do combats. So this one is just... Oh, yeah. You have two cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this one attacks for four. It, it, there's nobody to take the damage on the other half. So I'm just eating that four. Okay? Mm -hmm. This one... 
He's in the defensive stance, so he doesn't do anything. There's no attacking here. And there's no other lanes to resolve simultaneously. So that's it. So then we take our cards in our hand and we dump them to our discard. Maybe see later. We are going to switch who's first player. All the cards in the back row go up front. And then we draw five new cards. I don't know if I did that all in the right order, but it kind of just, there's probably a proper order to all that, but that's how I'm doing it. Um, again, rules are linked down in the video description. They're not, they're not long. They're, this game is like, the rules to it are very simple, very straightforward. It's the, the depth is in the gameplay. Um, yeah. Mm. So I am now the first player. Again, some of these cards I don't think I've played before. I may have held them in my hand, but I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Oh, did you do this? When this damages a player? Oh, I did not. Sorry. Yep. Thank you. When this damages a player, you may give another... Oh, I don't have another creature to give. Oh, that's right. I thought it was him. Sorry. No, nope, that's okay. I, I thought it was on that one. That's My bad. That's okay. You, maybe you can give it to this creature? No, no I'm just you. joking. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, I see, I see. I'm gonna play this guy. Yeah. An os ossuary mech, creature, robot, spirit. When this is destroyed, I get to upgrade a level one card in my discard pile. Okay. So destroy him if you can. Please, please do. He's not really great, but... And then I'm going to put the level 2 version in my discard pile. In the level 2 version, when you, this is destroyed, you upgrade a card in your discard pile. And it doesn't matter oh, the level. It doesn't level. matter the level. Yes. Yes. I love it. All right, I'm going to play a dinosaur. This has, if this is unopposed, meaning there's nobody in this lane, I can give it plus four attack. So this guy's going to attack for eight. Sorry, BizCon is just asking. I think, I think it got answered, but I just want to make sure that it's clear for everybody. So Bizcotta in chat says, now that I think about it, if no two half decks are the same and you buy two or more decks of the same color, can you take some cards out and put some in a deck to enhance your deck? No. No. Not by the rules of the game. This same, same thing was asked about Keyforge, but this same thing here, uh, cards have the name of the deck they came from right on them. And if you're ever playing in a tournament, they, they will do deck checks. And if you do sneak cards in, you will be like banned for life. So you don't want to mess with that. You're like, keep it fun. But if you're playing in your own living room or kitchen table, whatever, do whatever the hell you want. They're your cards. You bought them. Do whatever you want with them. Um, but again, they're tied to a deck list. So these are the cards that are in the deck. The deck has a name. The deck has flavor text. It has certain rarities on the cards. And I want you guys to understand something I didn't explain well enough. Either way, I have an adaptive assassin. There might be a aggressive assassin, a bolstering assassin, a... Uh, charge plated assassin i don't know what there is in the game but just so you know like we're playing with like a recycling war charger there could be like a spirit forge war charger like there is different variations of even the characters so this whatever the heck this says the zinthian dreadmaw you might have a different kind of dreadmaw in your deck that has different stats maybe a different ability and stuff and maybe we can see that when we crack the other decks if you stay till the end of the stream we'll uh, or the after this game, I want to open one of these uh, booster decks and we can kind of maybe show that and we can see how different they get. Mm -hmm. And these are just random boxes that they gave us at Gen Con from giant stacks they were they had there. People were buying and playing and demoing and stuff. So I'm curious how different each faction. I don't know the card pool. I don't know how many different things are in the card pool, 
but there are like different variations on e individual characters too. Eventually Keyforge started doing that crazy stuff um, and getting nuts with it, but this is kind of doing some of that right from the beginning. This guy was here, I think. <laughs> yes, sorry, I moved him back. I'm so sorry. I do that all the time. Rob does it too when we play. We just yeah. automatically play them here and then we realize. Again, we're still new. <laughs> sorry. We do appreciate the help with the rules in Matthew, the chat. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I just played this guy. Who's this guy? Oh, this guy I like. Oh, I miss the red faction. <laughs> or at least I miss these red cards. <laughs> I, I like this half deck we got in the starter set. I think the red one's my favorite. Okay. But I do like the purple also. I like the purple. But the blue is like, I think, the weakest one for me personally. But there's still some super powerful stuff in it. But I think I would like a different flavor of blue. Um, but this is, again, this is only from playing the decks that came uniquely in our starter kit. So yeah, so he gets plus four because he was unopposed. So he's unopposed because he's in a lane with no opposition. Yep. So you want to sneak him in before the board gets full kind of idea. Yep. And I found my level two. All right. So I have one last action here before we, uh, uh I have one last action then you have one last action yep. before we get to fight. So I need to make the proper choice here. Hmm. Are booster decks a separate purchase? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, here's a booster kit that comes with four half decks as his first edition. I don't want anyone that I don't know what I don't know what is coming to retail exactly, but my local game store already has pre-orders for starter kits. But the starter kits, I think the retail ones have different art and they're not like the alpha set. They're like something different. Oh, okay. They're just, they look different. I think these are like a special starter set art and stuff from like the Gen Con or Kickstarter or something. Maybe not. Maybe this is what they look like in stores too. I don't know. But I think this looks the same. But I've seen photos in retailers that look different than these, but it still is a starter set, which comes with the paper play mats, uh, little card tokens to play with. Oh, these? Yeah. Yeah, it comes with these little things, but we're just using dice to track health changes and attack changes and stuff. Um, but the booster is just straight up four packs of cards, just like we have here. Okay, and we'll crack some of that after. As long as you're all behaving. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, let's see. <laughs> just kidding. Mm hmm. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So I just have to look at stealth again because it's right here. Oh yeah. I just need to know exactly. So a creature with stealth does not engage in combat with creatures in the back row. So that means the creature in the back row doesn't hit them back, right? Right. It just ignores just them? ignored. Mm. Okay, I, I want to show, I want to try this. Um, yeah, I'm going to play this one, the Adaptive Assassin. You know, because assassins are cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one's got stealth. And when I deploy it, if I have the Forge, which I do, it's going to get plus two attack. If I don't, it would get plus two health. So because I'm the Forge player, I put this in the front row. I have to go find my Adaptive Assassin level two. I'm going to just throw up my discard. You can stay tuned to see if we... See it in the future. <laughs> I'm not going to show every single card we level up, um, but I'll, I'll show you them as we play them and what they do and stuff. Okay, uh, then this one is here. That's my second action, and I'm good. Go ahead. So sorry, it got plus two? Yeah, so it has uh, seven attack now. Okay, I'm going to just use dice to show the new attack value, as Mel did there. But if it's the, the health is the same or the attack's the same, I'm just going to leave the cards as is. We're only going to use dice when it changes, if that makes sense. And we okay. do have smaller dice, like I would normally play with smaller dice. But because it's on stream, I want everyone to kind of be able to see it, at, and, you know, and you can follow along very easily and kind of see what's going on. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> Okay, Four Walls says, this is the alpha set. Starter and boosters all come from this set. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. 
Larry says, starter as base token cards, modifier cards, paper, play. Oh, yes. Daniel asks, are the starter set in the booster, or sorry, are the starter set in, in the booster, booster from, from the same, same card, card pool? pool? Ah, okay, okay, okay. And the starter costs a little more, says four walls. You get paper mats and minion tokens too. Oh, yes. Oh, we yes, yes, These yes. little guys. Oh, yeah. Do we have the right colors on our half of the table uh, here? No, but that's fine. Well, no, it's not I fine. Here, you take yours over there. I don't see any minions coming into play yet, but we do have cards in our decks that do play minions. But again, you don't play every card in every game. Mm -hmm. You've played very few cards in every game. So even with the same two half decks, every game could be very different, which is neat. Okay. I'm going to also play a spell since you did and, and oh, I, did, okay. I didn't like it. So I'm going to play, if you want to put that up, on oh. Light of the Herd. Oh, we'll find it. I don't know this one. So give a creature aggressive this turn. No! So I will... No, no, no. Give this guy aggressive, meaning he gets to push up to the front row. No! Oh, did that foil give your... Give your thing? dinosaurs plus three, plus three. And both these are dinosaurs. So give them plus three on their attack and plus three on their health each. So that goes to five. That is filthy. Five, I didn't know that card exists. I, I, I played with the green a few times. I, I've never eight, seen that one. And then plus three on here. Or I never noticed Seven. it. Seven. Maybe I didn't have dinosaurs in play and I kind of just like threw it away. Six. Dirty. 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 All right. <laughs> Okay. okay, that's it. Combat time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll just go left to right here. But again, it all happens simultaneous. So if you have any cards that are getting effects off creatures dying and stuff, you just kind of put them to the side until all the combat's done and then resolve the effects kind of idea. At least that's how we do it. So I'll attack here for seven. Okay. Hitting a player for seven. Going out of 45. You're attacking me here for four? Uh, When this damage is a player. Oh, yeah. But, sorry. But I remember, it all happens simultaneous. So just remember to add that to the other creature yeah, after. Okay. Okay, this one here is hitting you for four. Okay. Oh, no, I don't need to do that. Okay. Okay, this one is hitting you for 11. Okay, so this one's definitely dead. This one's hitting you back for seven. Okay, so I have one remaining. Okay, boom. So that didn't okay. work out. Plan spoiled. So now, and then you hit me for four? Yeah. Okay, and then end of combat. So now we'll do this one to give this guy plus two health. So when and... this creature damages the player, which it did. Yep. Give another creature plus two plus two. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in trouble. What is going on here? What is going on here? Mm -hmm. All right. This guy down. Oh, I'm going to get wrecked. Not okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm losing the, still. Yeah, yeah. But the, oh, well, that doesn't matter. Uh, the answer to this is in the red cards that <laughs> are over in your half right now. <laughs> okay. So here is the last round or the last turn of the first cycle. So these five, oh, something's wrong. Why? You have too many cards? Yeah, I have. What? One, two, three, four, five. Mine's good. Uh, what has happened? Hold on. Let me just peek. I'll shuffle it again after. And maybe put, like when I was demoing, you know, like I might have put a, yeah, there's a level two card. Because when I was demoing, this should be here. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to shuffle these yeah, yeah. and draw new ones. Okay. I knew that would happen when I was like showing <laughs> off all the different levels. Okay. I would put something in the wrong pile. I'm just gonna read my cards while you do that. Uh, just make sure the sleeves are facing the right way. Okay. All right. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so what I was saying was, this is our last, for the first turn, these five will get shuffled in with the discard pile at the end of this uh, turn. And, oh, I'm going second now, right? Yes. Okay. Holy crap. I'm going to play another spell. I'm just going to grab it first. I have to grab it so that I never forget. Um, so I may play a Wisp Minion. So the Wisp Minions are just basic, like, creatures, two and two. Uh, let's put it two and two. Let's put it here. Uh, I'm first, yep. And give your minions plus one, plus one. So it's now a three, three.
And this is like the fiddly stuff I'm talking about when you can tell this game like definitely should have a proper digital app to track health and attack as it changes and stuff. Feels very weird, but uh, yeah, very weird, but it's fine. Definitely fine. But it's just so weird. Uh, hmm. Hmm, okay, uh, I am going to... Don't laugh before you play a card, I hate that. I have to, because the stupid <laughs> names and flavor text and some of the art is so cheesy. So silly, so cheesy. Oh, retail is September 22nd. I, I, oh, okay. I googled it, all I could find was early fall. Um, what country is that, Rick? Uh, the, is that global? Is that U.S. Canada? Where? What is? It, where'd you get this date from? I don't know if anyone in the chat is like works for Stoneblade Entertainment or has official info or whatever. I know you guys are just fans and from the Discord and stuff, but uh, yeah, I couldn't find it when I was looking for it. I should just email them, but I've been very busy lately, playing many of these games. <laughs> uh, all right, so it's time for some Cookie Monster. Om nom nom. So this is a spell. Give a creature minus three attack, minus three health. If this destroys a creature, you may play a mindless zombie minion. Now, I could reduce this guy down to zero, zero, and he died, but this is just a minion. But this juicy guy over here with 8,000 attack, I could make him minus three and he's gone. So I will do that. I'll give him minus three, minus three. And then I get to play a mindless zombie minion. So here's one of my minions, which is a three, three. Again, there's higher level minions, okay? Uh, I'm going to play this one here, kind of block this guy a little bit maybe. And then I need to find my level two om nom nom with a straight face and put oh, it- Oh, Rick's in Canada, nice. Rick, that is awesome. That's okay. awesome, okay. It, I have seen it for pre-order in Canada for sure, so there you go, that's, a, that's good to know. And that is literally 10 days from now. Wow. So what you're saying is we need to pre-order or else we're not getting any of it by then? timing. Well, uh, let's see after we crack these open. I want to yeah. I want to crack these so open before far. I make any more decisions. I want to see how much it changes. If, if yeah, they feel the same, then I it's going to be like, ah, oh, it's fine. But I but, doubt it. I, I think it'll be like Keyforge because it's designed by Richard. The same ideas, even though you get the same faction half deck. Yeah. They have like different flavors and care, like some, you might, you might get a whole half deck focused on minions. Yeah. You might get a whole half deck focused on dinosaurs or oh, robots. Oh, give me more dinosaurs. Or... I like the dinosaurs. Yeah, but then you got to switch out all those dinosaurs you're playing with, you know? Oh yeah, your minion goes in the back. Thank you. That's like I said, we will. Oh, I did it over here. Yep. Yeah, we. I know it. We know it. We do it all the time. We catch Thank each you, other. Thank you, Matthew. I love you, buddy. Uh, and I definitely would remember when we go to combat, and I'm like, oh wait, I'm supposed to have them in the back row. Yeah, we definitely catch each other. Okay, but... so this Om Nom Nom is out of here, but I have a new, better, shiny one in my discard pile. All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, you've changed some things that I wanted to originally do. <laughs> so... Uh, you could just throw a card from your hand in the banish and upgrade it. You don't have to put anything in play. Mm -hmm, I know, I know. All that right. was an option. Let's... Sean says, hello, Rob. Share the names of your decks. Uh, yeah, I, I was talking about them earlier on the stream. Uh, here, here. I could bring them up. Maybe I can link them in the chat, right? I don't know. Here, here. I'm going to show you guys quick. You can totally pause it on the screen or, or rewind back to see them. Um, but I'm only going to put them on the screen for like a minute. We, we can look at them after. Um, yeah, do they have links? Yeah, I don't know. I literally just imported them like half hour before the stream, I think it was. I, I haven't done more than even like look at them in this view. I, I don't know if this like 
it goes deeper and like i wonder when you click download to tts what does that does well, that give it, you a file yeah one? probably but hold on let me let me click this one oh my god it was registered today Oh, so we're supposed to go in and put our like wins and losses and stuff? No, I think when you play on Tabletop Simulator, maybe it tracks oh. it or something. I don't know. I, see. I don't know. I don't see a link. Oh, look, it shows the abilities here for each level. Oh, that's kind of cool. neat. And I know you can save your like mash decks together too, um, somehow. Hmm. In here, I think. Like fused decks, right? You haven't fused any decks yet. So make sure you have registered at least two decks over in the My Decks page. Then click Fuse New Deck button, select two and combine them. So this is if you're like, these, I own, if it gets like I did with Keyforge, and I literally have a giant five lane white boxes full of like hundreds of decks, you need to start ranking them and saving the, the important ones in a separate area or on a database or something. Marking your favorites in the website is what I used to do. Yeah and keeping them in a separate row in one of those boxes. But, and then when it was tournament time, I'd go like start, let's, let's test with these decks, you know? Um, but in this, like imagine you own hundreds of half decks. I do not remember which two worked really well together yeah. when it's tournament time, yeah. right? So I guess fusing them is the way to do it. Okay, I would assume. So let's see if we can do that. So if I go to add maybe, what are you playing? You're playing, I'm playing Korok and... Red and green. Okay. Oh no, that's just a tag. Oh, so you can like put a note there, which is cool. <laughs> I have no idea. But anyways, I'll figure that out later. If like, oh, there's the faction names, right? Utera, oh. Alloyan, Tempest, and Necrium. I didn't know the names. I didn't know that either. They're there. Not that I care, but they're there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just like the game. <clears throat> okay. All right. So this is the card I played. He has a deployability which is give one of your creatures a plus three attack. This turn, it gets breakthrough. No! Yes. No, I know what you're doing. Uh, I'm going to give plus three attack here. Yes. Oh, no. That means all the extra damage that goes over top of this mindless zombie is going to hit me in my health dial. Okay. And, oh, he, no. and it only gets breakthrough this turn. Okay. And that's my two actions. No. Do you have one more? Yeah, I do. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Tiny also says, I think my wife would love this game a lot. Uh, she loves to beat me with these type of games. This game, oh, <laughs> so interesting. All right. We'll talk about that a little bit later, what I think about so that. I'm going to play this spell a little risky, but I'm going for the hard upgrade later strategy, and hopefully Ooh. I can survive the early game. I get to upgrade a card in my hand, then discard it. You may choose a creature, deal one damage for each level one or level two and level three card in your discard pile. This effect happens before this is banished. So I'm just going to put this one here for now as we resolve it. So I get to upgrade a card in my hand. Mm. Why not upgrade this guy oh, in my hand? My God. <laughs> so he's going to get banished. He's going to get upgraded here. And I'm going to get upgraded in my hand, but I think it goes to my discard pile because it tells me to right here. Then discard it. Now I choose one creature and deal it. One, two, three, four, five, six damage. Hmm. You don't like this guy? No, I need him to die. Dinosaur is friendly. I need him to die. Okay. And then this gets banished. And now I need to find the upgrade of that card. Oh, sorry. I'm like putting my hand and then throw it here. And now it's combat time. Yep. So nothing here. In this lane, we know this guy's got breakthrough. Yep. So he's definitely crushing three off this zombie is getting eliminated. The, the minions don't go in your banish. They don't go in your deck. They just they're out back and the sideboard uh, over here with the other minion cards. Okay. And then seven will break through. Uh, so down to 38. Okay, here I hit you for three and you hit me for four. So both of these yep. die. And this wisp just goes away. And then here I hit you for four 
Yep, and he has four. Or and you hit me for five. five. He has four health only. And you hit me for four. He has three, so he's dead. And when oh, this yeah, is I destroyed, didn't... upgrade a level one card in your discard pile. Oh, I shouldn't have probably <laughs> done that, but that's fine. Okay, it's my favorite part of the game. If you guys didn't notice, and blue, this blue deck is all about these tricks. Okay, there was one I wanted to upgrade. I bet there is. Level one though only. I wish I could upgrade a level two already. Oh no. Uh... My board is wiped, eh? Mm. Oh yeah, your zombie minion. Yeah, it does deal damage to me. Did it? Oh, yes. Did it have? It, it did, yeah, three. Oh, that, it did yeah, kill it. Why, oh, yeah, that's why you did the five. That's why I took away the, Sorry, the yes, yes. six or whatever. So we're starting yeah. fresh again. Nobody has any creatures. Yeah. It's true. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to level up Digitize. I don't know if I'll need it, but I'm going to do it, I think. Should I, though? I probably should do a creature, but my creatures are kind of weak sauce. Well, what does the other one do, actually? Let me just peek at Digitize. Hmm. No, let's go. Bingo. This is tough. I, I like, I don't know. My level ones in here are not the ones I, I really want to level up, but I think I just need to pick one. I mean, getting uh, oh, I know who to pick just ba up. just based on name. I know, but it's like I know which ones I want to level up. They're right here or in here, <laughs> oh. based on what I played before. I'll just do this one because it sounds awesome. Like uh, <laughs> Dark Heart Sorcerer, who's a warrior mage. Like why not? Why not? He's a defender, so that means even if I'm uh, I play this guy as a first player, he goes in the back row. And if you see here, he gets like pretty juicy on the health side, but maybe not the attack. But if I keep playing spells, I could be dealing damage to player and gaining health. I, I don't know. I, I'm just upgrading him. Not really what I'm looking for, but we'll we'll do it anyway. So that will go in there. This guy goes in. Oh, he goes here. I need to get... No, he was already in he here. He was already in there, yep. And then we're and discarding then these. Yep. Okay, so what is happening now is the normal refresh stuff. But uh, there's no characters to move up. We flip first player. Now, because that's the end of a cycle, our discard pile and our last five cards in the deck, again, like every game you play, there's a different five that are in that bottom five that don't get seen. You shuffle them up. And this is the new deck you're pulling from that has a bunch of level twos in here. It has five mystery cards at the end that if you know your deck, you know what they are. If you don't, you don't. John, I don't know the game Artifact. I'm not sure what that is. I appreciate, though, some of you guys, the regulars in here who are watching along trying to understand this game. I do appreciate it. Because, like, I might not be explaining it the best. It is a little weird. And, and it, it, like, the rules are straightforward, but the gameplay is, like, and the flow is a little unorthodox, like, a little strange. But I'm telling you, once you go through it once or twice, if you like the upgrading, you like the lane combat and the planning for early or late game and all that kind of stuff, it's addictive. It's really good. It's I really guess good. I didn't check, but usually one, two. Six, seven, eight, yeah, I'm good. Six, seven, eight, Twenty. Yeah. So one of the biggest things, there especially ooh, especially in the beginning, we realized that we would forget to take the card when we yeah. played it. That's so, uh it's very easy to forget it, but then when you realize like you'll lose the game if you don't do it <laughs> properly because you're just playing with lower level cards. Um you know, you're messing with the deck. Uh, yeah, you, it's kind of like the best part. You want to upgrade your stuff. Uh, but we did forget it a lot when we were first playing. Yeah, it just is not something intuitive. It, which is, the, it's like you could tell it's from a digital game, you know? Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're doing it with digital in mind. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, Matthew says you're doing a good job. Uh, yeah, a good job, a goo job. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen you, and I'm able to follow along. And Matthew's able to like correct us. Which I know, is great. I love it. So I love it the first time, so that's awesome. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm just joking, Matthew. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm first. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try some tricks. This is silly. I hope this doesn't lose me the game. Oh, you'll just on. burn it. You'll just burn it. I know what you'll do. Well, maybe you won't. Oh, well, yeah, you probably will. That's the thing. Like, I don't want to do it as my first action, but you still can respond to my second one. The balance of, like, going first sometimes and the tricks you want to do, you know, like, the other player might have the answer for it and just, like, destroy it. Yeah. So annoying. Uh, okay, let me think. Oh yeah, now we have we have these abilities. Ah, uh, yes, well. yes, yes. So yeah, I, I like to um what Mel did there. Mel, just show them what you did. Oh sorry, I just moved this on to our level two to show that we now have access to this level two ability. Yeah, and and so what we could do once you fire off this once per cycle ability, you can just like exhaust it or move this over top of it. That's kind of how we were doing it. Yeah, um, I'm not so, sure what like tournament play is supposed to yeah. be. I think I think they're supposed to exhaust it, but so I'm gonna move it there. So now I have this ability available, uh, where I could destroy one of your creatures to give a creature plus five plus five. Not really the greatest. And I have give a creature plus three plus three, and it has all creature types this turn. I wish you left that other character in play that destroys and then does the upgrading thing, because then that's like the perfect one to do it to. It's like I destroy it and then oh yeah 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 on purpose. Like if you won't destroy it. Uh, okay. Okay. Um. I do have to say, I wish you could play three cards. So many times, I'm like, I wish I could do three things. I know. I game. agree. Oh, silly. Okay, uh, let's do this for fun. This is all for the lulls, okay? Okay. I'm playing this Spite Maiden, just because I spite you. <laughs> okay. I'm playing it out of spite. Alright, three attack, two health. Okay, this is level one. Now this is where it gets silly. Deploy. You may have this deal five damage to you. If you do, you may play a level one spell for free! Uh. Yay! But I don't think it's smart to do right now. Well, I'm going to just put this right in the middle. I don't know. I'm going to deal myself one, two, three, four, five. Probably really bad. Probably really bad. But upgrade because... this first. Oh, yes. So yes, 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 yes. I feel maiden. like I always upgrade before I even read and do any yeah, of the abilities, I I so should. I don't forget. Spite Maiden. All right. Upgraded Spite Maiden in my discard pile. All right. Okay. I'm only doing this because I have these two cards together, and it's kind of funny. It's not funny. It's not, not great. No, it's, it is funny. It's not crazy OP. But now I'm going to play Digitize, <laughs> which I wish I upgraded last turn. <laughs> because now I'm actually going to use it, is give a creature plus five. If this is your only creature in play, give it plus five health. So I will do this. Let me grab Digitize. Which again, like, if I saw a level two version of this right now because I upgraded it last turn. Oh, it would be eight. I, it would be eight, eight plus, And then I'd be leveling this up to three right now, which oh, I should just did it. It was the first one I went to, and I, I went against my instincts. Uh, so this will go in here, and uh, we're going to give uh, 8 attack, now this thing has, okay, and it has uh, 7 health, okay, it's in the front row, and then this goes away in the banish pile. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Because you did that. And You're going to burn this guy away. I know. I, I know. I knew you had it. I knew it. I know my luck. This is why I didn't want to do it. And why I, this is exactly why I said it was for the law. I almost upgraded this last uh, last cycle, but I didn't. And now <laughs> I guess So now matter. Mel deals eight damage to a creature, burns this thing away for no reason. <laughs> I knew you had it. Damage. That's why I didn't want to do it. Because I was like, this is funny. I'm playing all these cards to do this. And you're just going to wipe it away. <laughs> For the lulls. For the lulls. <laughs> oh, gosh. I know her deck because I played the red a whole bunch. And I, the red's my favorite. 
And I fell in love with cards like Disintegrate and stuff. Uh, yeah, there's some good burn in there, and it's really fun. That's my style of play. I love it. <laughs> Hard burn. <laughs> okay, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, all right. So. so. Yeah, these all suck. Sweet. Yeah. I'll just play a bolstering captain. These are the cards I had early in the first round that I just didn't want to play, and now I'm stuck with them. Uh, give your other warriors plus two, plus two. There are none. And give another one of your creatures. I could have gave that creature some armor if you left it on the board. <laughs> well, that's what I wanted to do at first before yeah, you yeah. give it any more buff, because yeah. I could only burn eight. Okay, so bolstering captain. Stinking pile of bolstering captain. <sighs> well... Oh. Are you going to answer my two attack, Mel? Whoa. Watch out. I'm damaging for two. I think I'm oh. Gonna... oh, no, that's destroyed. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I think I'm going to actually ignore that. I'm going to put out my level two yeah. yep, so I can yep. get my level three. And this says if it, this is unopposed, give it plus seven. Yep. There's nothing opposing it. At least that's how I understand how that works. Okay. Rick D says, I think I've watched every Soul for Fusion stream I can find. Seven. Well, Rick, if enough people watch this one, we will do another one and play with these booster decks or play it when it launches at retail. We'll grab some. Like, I'm having fun with this game. I like this game a lot. And I definitely would stream it again for sure. Once we get through a few other games first, of course. But yeah, uh, I've, I've been having a blast with literally four half decks playing Mel over and over and <laughs> still want to play more. Like, I don't know if that's that's something you're not, but okay. Okay, that's that. Oh yeah, because that was your second. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fight time. Uh, nothing. Uh, defender doesn't fight. Uh, I'll hit you for two. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. That's that. All right. Discard our hands. Those guys come up. Flip the first player. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Yeah, see, all these cards aren't supposed to come together. That's the problem. Hmm. This is an interesting hand here. Oh. I can't do that yet. <laughs> Orwall says, I'll watch every time. I can't get enough of this game. I used to have a Keyforge obsession. Orwalls, have you ever seen our Keyforge tournament videos back in the day? <laughs> In 2019 or 20, tw yeah, 2018, 2018, 2019, 2018, 2019 yeah. we used to go to a lot of Keyforge tournaments and stream and, and make tournament videos and stuff. Uh, Forwell says, I'll watch every time. I can't get enough of this game. You still have a Keyforge obsession, but I think I traded up, LOL. Keyforge is a good game, though. Uh, Keyforge is a great game. I love Keyforge. All right. We're going to just play that. Uh, he has Breakthrough. And if this replaced a creature, I did not. Uh, all right. Oh, for else I watch all your keyboard videos. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I want to play some more of that game, too. Yeah, we were just talking about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I do. I just want to win. Uh, okay, I'm gonna play. More hours. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Mm. 
This is my second. No. This is your first. First car is you've done one. Just this one. Breakthrough. If this replaced a creature, did it? No, right? Breakthrough on five attack. This stays four health, so one would get through. Not a big deal until you buff it up in two seconds because you have dinosaur buffs. <laughs> Uh, sure. Oh, back here, back here. Uh, so let's find this shambling patron. Okay. This guy's an activate I could do. Give your other beasts plus two attack. There are none. Uh, when one of your creatures is destroyed, deal one damage to a player. You gain one health. Uh, okay, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to play a spell Burnout. Uh, you may play a spell Sprite. Which is a minion? Which is a minion, What's yes. What's their stats? One, in, one attack, four health. Okay. Uh, let's just play it here. All right. And then give your creatures plus two attack. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and three. Okay, this is going to go here, and I will get that. All right, that is mine too. Go ahead. You're done for the I'm turn. Done for the turn. Hmm. I'm going to play Soul Reap. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deal five damage to a creature. You gain five health. If you have a beast in play, I do. Deal five damage to a player. You gain five health. And I'll find the level three of Soul Reap. Put the level three juicy gold bordered version into my discard pile. And then I could destroy one of your creatures. That's probably not a smart idea. No. This one, if I destroy it, this guy plus five still doesn't keep him alive. So, no, I'm okay. Alrighty. All right, Attack. battle time. All so right. Three damage here. There's four remaining. And you smoke this guy. Mm -hmm. But he has one. One of your creatures is destroyed. Deal one damage to a player. You gain one. Okay. And then this uh, hit happens. for seven, and you hit me for two. Two, yeah. So four remaining. So I have two creatures that died. So that means I deal two damage to you, and I gain two health. Okay. And these are both here. Wow. Oh, sorry. He had breakthrough. Oh yeah, one so point. Sorry. One point, right? Uh, plus no, I gave him. Oh plus, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was seven. So I took away one. How much more then? Uh. So two more. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay, we forgot about the breakthrough. Okay, discard the rest. Uh, flip, flip. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just drawing the worst hands. Um, well, your heel is keeping you alive. I know, but it's like, ugh. Yeah, this is junk. Like, yeah, it's junk. Okay, I'm going to play a Steadfast Spirit. Uh, if this is played in a lane with an opposing creature, destroy this. Well, it's not. 
Okay. Go ahead. All right. I think. Let's go here. Uh, here, sorry. Uh, let's get this first, and then I'll go through. So yeah. Um, give this creature plus one plus one for each spell in your banished zone. Oh wow! One, two, <laughs> three, four. Nice. Four. So it gets plus four plus four. So it's a seven attack and eight health. And eight health. And then when this creature loses health, deal one damage to each enemy creature. I'm going to play this Logos card. I mean, this uh, Meta Mind <laughs> Overseer. You may play a Gizmo minion on deploy. So I'm going to put this guy up here. And I don't know what a Gizmo minion is. Ismo, when a creature replaces this, give it plus two, plus two. That's neat. Okay. Hmm. Hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing anything I'm thinking. I could. Oh my god, so much damage. Yeah, I don't know. Go ahead. I'm not even going to do this stupid thing. I guess that's why I can't. I should have played more minions and then used this ability, but I don't know. We'll just roll with this. All right, what do you got? Mm. You're playing your back row. Yep. Or just burn someone with a spell, I'm sure. No, I'm going to play this mm. guy who is a level, going to be a level three. Oh my god, this is so bad. And he has deploy. Give one of your creatures plus five. Uh, well, I have to do it here. Three, four, five. Uh, this turn it gets breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Yep. Alrighty. Yep. And then I think I should do this as well. Give a creature plus three plus three, and it has all creature types this turn. So I'll give it three more. Uh. <laughs> Fine. I'll just learn from the game I played with her today where I showed her this was all possible okay. with red. That's why I love red so much. So Two. many good lines of play with the red deck we have. Okay. I feel like the blue is the weakest one. We I have. agree. But maybe it's not. Maybe we're missing something. It might be fine with one of the other pairs, but I don't know. I just feel like there, there's too many synergies we have in the green and the red and the purple that all are fine when you mix any three of those. Yeah. But the blue mixed in with any of them is like, eh. It'd be interesting it's definitely to weaker. try this blue yeah. that we have off to the side. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. But I, I wonder, I, I will, there's only my second time playing the blue, but like if there's a warrior kind of minion strategy that works better, I don't know. Because I'm not really doing that. But I'm also having bad hands in this one. I, I've never really felt bad hands before. Where you literally like draw all like level two cards and then your next hand draw all level one cards and like oh yes yeah and there's not a good mix of them that sucks but uh it's you gotta make it work i guess okay uh so let's fight so you're attacking me here for two yep okay and then i uh i'm attacking you for uh six twelve eighteen nineteen twenty 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 three so minus two off the health destroying this thing so 21 breakthrough so I go down to 21 health. Oh boy. Okay. Here, you're attacking me for two. Go to two. And I'm then just I'm trying to stem the bleeding. Attacking for, seven. for seven. So five gets blocked there, and two more goes away here, and this guy's yep. dead. And just then hanging on. You're attacking me for six, mm -hmm. and I'm attacking you for seven. Yep. Just not working out. And then this doesn't matter because there's no enemy creatures to deal damage to. Yep. Okay. Uh, so discard these. 
Uh, we're now starting the next cycle because there's only five cards left. Oh, today. yeah. So we're going to shuffle, flip who's first player. Yeah, I don't know how I'm supposed to deal with this. I, I like, I'm just drawing into like just never enough attack to kill these things, but it might be because I was leveling up spells early, but I was also using things to level up other cards and creatures, but they just don't have the attack to ma match the health you're getting. So it's just like it's all imbalanced. I don't know if I have the sweeping damage needed uh, to deal with this multiple, but maybe minions. They don't have a lot of health. I know, but I, I don't like, have, like, yeah. I'm not I'm not even enough to deal with it. Like, yeah. usually you can put down stuff and trade more, but you're winning the trades. Yeah. And it's like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think in this one I just valued the buffs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is neat. Okay, I'm going to shuffle a little better. Well, unless you want to cut. Yeah, hopefully some of the leveling up I did pays off, like, and I see things together that have good place. But I feel like I haven't leveled up a lot to level 3 yet. Normally I would have. But when you draw hands that are all 1s in the second cycle, it's like... Oh yeah, it's rough. Oh, sucks. It sucks. Yeah, I love when I get to like level up to level three super fast. All right, go ahead, cut that. Like, look how much I've leveled up from my level two. Like, so oh, much yeah. because I keep seeing level keep seeing ones. Level one. Yeah, and it's sad. I have it's, a couple level normal. threes, but I don't remember how many. We got a new sub. Erica, thank you for subscribing. Welcome, Welcome to the channel. Uh, and I'm first. Yep. Oh, yeah, another thing we never talked about is once the board's full and you can't deploy anymore, you have to start replacing or not playing anything. And that's when you would banish, I guess, or... Hmm. Well, I think we're going to do a spell and we're going to do another burnout. So that'll go to level three. Which will just let me play a spell sprite and give my creatures plus three. That's crazy. Plus three attack. Oh my four. god. Plus three here goes to four. Plus three here goes to four. And one plus two. Okay. Uh, let's play. <laughs> yeah, if you just burn this creature, then we're done. There's nothing I can do. Uh, let me see. Some... No, you can never play a card behind another card. Oh yeah, sorry. The last guy does get plus three. I didn't run out of dice. I just stopped. It was a ten. Hey, the Dread Maw. Level up. All right, go ahead. All right. I'm going to replace this guy. Uh, he has Breakthrough. If this replaced a creature, give it plus five, plus five. This is 10 attack and 11 health. Play Soul Reap level three, deal seven damage to a creature. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'm get just, rid of him. Just gonna get my other guy. Sorry, get before rid of I him. forget. Uh, this guy's gone. Yeah, seven damage to a creature, I gain seven health. If you have a beast in play, I do. Deal seven damage to a player, which was another creature, and I gain seven health. 
But that card is now gone to my banished. I don't have a level four version of it. Those don't exist. I wish they did. Uh, I'm also going to deal six damage to a creature using my Cersei ability. No, should I do it? Probably yes. Uh, what's this guy got? When this loses health, so one damage to each enemy creature. And then I gain six health. Okay, fight time. Ten. Ten. And I do ten to you with breakthrough, so five will get through. And you hit me for six? Yeah. All right, so he's at five. Okay. Oh, you flip. I don't know if I'm smiling inside. He does do sneaky things here. Yeah, but it's the breakthrough that's the problem. Like, yeah, it's the breakthrough that's like, you know, I don't have the answers for this stuff. Yeah, like if you get 14. And it's like, I have so many cards that rely on like getting a board to buff others. And there's, you have the answers to like keep my board shredded. So a lot of my cards are junk because they don't get any of their abilities because I don't have another one of this creature in play, another one of that creature in play. Like I can't build my little tribe. And it's a little rough. That's why I'd never play with this pair. Mm, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I can survive another turn, but maybe I can. But you got powerful cards in hand and two lanes open, so you can just sneak around. Yeah, I think. Mm. Yeah, I'll just put this guy. I don't think it matters. I'll put him here uh, and grab his level up. Okay. Put him here. Game his level up. And uh, deploy, you gain plus two health. Okay, I'll play a shambling patron patron. Okay. Uh if you gained health this turn, which I did from this guy, give this creature plus two plus two. So he's a six and an eight. And then if this were to place a creature, which it did not. Uh GG. What these guys aren't these guys aren't hitting you. Oh, they're not? No. Oh, okay. 10? 10. How much is going? Is this breakthrough? No, just this one. Uh, how much is here? Five? Oh, going so, over? Oh, yeah. So, so yeah. Oh, so it's either sorry. way you hit. Yeah, good game. Yeah, there's nothing. I, I drew into like a crap hand that's like, this guy wants warriors. I have no warriors. This guy wants beasts. I have no beasts. 
could buff a single guy up, but it, it, it's like it only works if I have one guy. But you you go wide, I'm trying to go tall, and it's just not working. So yeah, this is not man. That was like my first unenjoyable game Aww. of this. But it's just the the decks I, I have. I have felt like, like that when I played against you before. Yeah. Oh, because you probably had blue, and it's not not my play style. This is not fun. I could make this blue work with the red, maybe, or or the green, but I don't know. Just wasn't there. But again, if I had more time playing with it over and over again, maybe I'd pair a different half with it and make it work. But yeah, it is messy. Very messy. Okay, now is the sorting. Um, but yeah, I'll do this just so we can visually see that. You got me. I don't know what the oh. total score was. I but... think it would have been even zero. What? I think it would have been even zero because 10 and then I had, oh, no, no, maybe but minus like what, one. No, but what I hit you back for, if oh, anything, which yeah. I don't think would anything because I didn't have breakthrough or stealth or no, nothing. No, but the, this guy would have hit me back for whatever he had. Yeah, but it doesn't go from your life total, is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. I so you beat me like 25 back. to zero. Crushed. And now the sorting, the worst part of the game. I'm just going to put similar colored bordered cards and then sort them. That's exactly, I, I do that too. Yeah, these are all... I just find it the fastest way to sort them. Yeah, my brain gets messed up like looking at the color of the faction versus the color of the border. And I start messing up where they go. I don't know why. It's just weird. Yeah. All right. But games are usually really quick, so even if you do get crushed or it goes a little crazy, similar to Keyforge, it's like, oh well, that was super fast. The only difference is Keyforge you can shuffle up and play again while you're waiting for the next round to start or whatever. And then it's sort of sitting here sorting, and now let me divide. I'll go, of course, if you're playing with the same deck again, it's not that. Oh bad. yeah, not that bad. It's just sort them by color. But if you want to try different decks, it's like, let's sort them all out now. Matthew says, I would like to see a red and blue versus green and purple. Of the same decks? We can do that. The same decks, Matthew, or these new? Well, let's just open one of those oh, yeah, and take a peak? look and compare. Yeah, that's I'm fair. curious. But they might not know at home because they, they didn't see the whole decks. Um, but well, Four Wolves also said, I thought blue was the weakest faction. So I tried out one of my decks that makes Gizmo minions. Holy moly. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. It was like that in Keyforge too. Sometimes you get like, uh, oh, this Sanctum lineup is kind of stinky. Maybe Sanctum sucks. Just because you have a few decks that Sanctum doesn't work well in, really. But then all of a sudden you find like the right one and you're like, holy, Sanctum's the most powerful faction in this deck, the way it works. Uh, it's just fun. Like, And it depends on the meta too or what other people are playing. Uh... Matthew, or Matthew, Daniel is saying uh, we got time for a blind game with the expansion deck? I mean, we could. You mean you literally want us to play blindfolded? That's not fun for anyone. I know, like, <laughs> I, how am I going to tell where to get my upgraded cards from? I might bring them from the wrong deck and grab the wrong card. And who's going to tell us what they do? <laughs> this just deals five damage to you. <laughs> like, we turn out the lights and play, then you guys won't be able to see. I, I don't know, it doesn't work. <laughs> But when we did first play this game, we did play blind. I didn't look through the deck at all. I didn't yeah, see what yeah. synergies yeah. worked. I just wanted to see the flow of the game. So. so looking back, I probably should have took this guy in that matchup. Because I didn't oh. even use my first ability because I didn't go minions. Because Thirsty has like this destroy one of your creatures, right? That's great if I'm playing the zombie minion or, or gizmo strategy, which I wasn't. Um, it just didn't line up where that made sense. Because uh, your breakthrough, if I'm putting little minions in, you're just breaking through over them. It doesn't matter, but mm -hmm. uh, I could have gave a creature plus four attack and also give it four armor for a turn, which could have helped them maybe survive, and maybe I could build a board up after if you just didn't keep killing my guys. And then shields up, uh, you and your creatures get six armor for a turn. Might have been the difference in one of those rounds where I actually got a few characters down and we did the battle. I could have maybe survived and some of your guys would be dead. Yep, or even some of the breakthrough, right? Yeah, because the problem was my guys I only lasted around because they never had enough to take your guys out and they just kept dying. So every resource I kept putting in was just you removing it right away. Yeah. And uh, you were just kept building up a big board. Uh, but I, I need this to like turn the tide. So I, I, I regret not valuing Ironbeard in this matchup. Well, what my strategy kind of was for this game is I know that purple has some good heal cards. Yeah. So I just highly valued yeah. anything that Tons gave of damage. Yeah. Ton, anything that gave a buff. 
so that even if something was almost it, I could then heal it back up a little bit. Okay, so purple, blue. All right, you know what we'll do? We should probably do... I mean, there's still a fair bit of people here. Um, so, I think we should do... There's two options. Um, two options is... Oh, no way. We either do what Matthew's saying, um, where we play the combo. He had the combo of and blue and red. We and basically play another game with the same decks, but mix it up to show that even though they're all the same four half decks, you jam two different ones together, and based on the different cards you actually choose to play in a turn, and level up and see later, it could be a whole different game with all the same 120 cards here on the yep. table. We've played this now like five or six times, and the games don't always look like that. No. Very it's been different. very different every very time. Very different, yep. And Mel played red there, way different than I usually play red, um, based on her choices and stuff. So, the other option is, we take, because these are sleeved, the quickest way just to get into another game uh, is either A, play with the same ones again, or we crack... We still do what Matthew wants, playing the color, but... So one, one set one, is those? Yeah, one player plays with the unsleeved new cards, and the other player plays with the sleeved uh, pairing. Or both of us play with unsleeved cards. Or we play with all the new cards. I don't know, it's up to well, you. Well, I'm trying to think of poll options to try oh, to make this simple. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So that people can vote what they want to see for our last game. So, of so the then stream. there's three options. There's play with the mix here. Play mix match or play all new yeah does that make sense yeah okay i'm gonna put a poll in the chat just give me a second here and you guys who are watching can decide but we will stick with the colors that matthew is suggesting yeah play uh with existing cards Ah. Uh, and half or all uh, play with new booster deck only. And if you don't care, once the poll's in the chat, you can just pick an option. Yeah, we can dissect. So if, if we stay with the same ones, we can see how it kind of works switching the existing decks to kind of see how it, it, there's a lot of replayability there and or we can just have some fun cracking some new packs looking at a couple of them or looking at all new ones and kind of just seeing what what new cards we've never seen like again we only have experience with 120 cards in the pool um uh, some of these are new uh this green drop no okay I don't know. It just told me. Oh, I know. Because I'm doing the poll thing. Every time I do a poll, it now starts saying there's no data going to YouTube and it starts like saying oh. there's no connection. It's like a bug. I think it's a bug. No one freaks out in the chat. All right. So I put a poll in the chat. You guys can decide. If you're watching now, go in the live chat. If you're on a phone or a browser, I think you can, uh, you can vote. I'll leave it up for a couple minutes. Uh, and you guys can decide whether we play with the existing cards and we switch it. What were the colors Matt wanted to see? We wanted to see blue and red together versus green and purple. Blue and red. Yeah, we should probably put them together. Versus so. green and purple. Which seems like a little bit more of a even matchup, right? Because... Blue and red, green and purple. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But again, these this red is different from this red That's probably. true. We could open this, this pack this up and it'd be totally be, different. Yeah, this purple could be craptastic. This blue... Could be phenomenal because that's like what Four Walls says that. They thought that blue was terrible until they yeah, opened yeah. the pack. Yeah. Is this the first, is this our best blue we own? It's only the second blue we own. <laughs> but it might be the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. You, yeah. you don't know, guys, you don't know how hard it has been for me not to open these and, and experiment before we stream. But I was like, no, I want to just play with this and see how replayable these are so I can comment on that. And then we crack into these in a future stream. But like, I keep staring at cards unopened and like, I want to play them. The same way my Keyforge addiction was. Oh, yeah. It got so bad. 
even during the same first set. I don't know how many hundreds of decks I own from the first set. It's crazy. I have so many unopened ones too. Because Mel and I would be like, we're shopping at the market, the local market. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a there's a board game cafe right around the corner from this local market. <laughs> they have Keyforge decks on the front counter. Mel, can I just go grab one? Just one. Just the one deck. No, but then the problem is I also played and I yeah, also yeah. wanted new decks too. So it wasn't always just one. <laughs> it's that addiction of like opening a new Keyforge deck, looking for a great deck or looking for something different or trying, even though you're getting the same factions, the same set of cards. It's like just that, that it could be just, just a little synergistic, a bit different and a new experience. You could find that one magic deck that could be your favorite. Oh my God. You know, we driving home and we're just like, oh, I know that store sells Keyforge here. It is one sec. I got to pull in. Let's <laughs> yeah. just grab two decks. Let's just grab two decks. We're in a random city, city playing a tournament. We drove two hours on a Saturday morning, go play in an all-day tournament, and we're at the store. Of course, I'm going to buy decks between every round. I'm like, I want to buy another deck. I want to yep. buy another deck. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm waiting for the finals to start. I'm filming it. Uh, okay, I'm going to go buy a deck while I'm waiting for, for the players to come back from the washroom. Yeah, we and were very like addicted. Decks. Yeah, yeah. Then we would come and sit down here, and sometimes on stream or on Twitch at the time, right? Yep. And we would just like crack a pack and start playing against each other. Oh, my God. I play with my so daughter fun. too, like, you know, finding decks for her and like her favorite cards and like, oh, honey, you like those two cards? Oh, let me show you these three other decks I have that have those cards in them and like how they're different <laughs> and use these factions and oh, oh my, God. my God. But my favorite was, is still the sealed Keyforge when you just get a deck right then and there and, you know, nobody can bring some broken deck. Yeah, it's just play with what you have. Yeah. The those problem are my is favorite. if you get a bad one. That's what my favorite Keyforge is the one where you get three decks. Oh, I like that too, yeah. Remember at Origins Game Fair, when they, the launch of the second set, we went there for that. And I remember they were like, we played this little side tournament where you just play like four rounds around Robin. Yeah. And it's like, here's three decks. Pick one to play with the whole tournament. Or they did the long tournament where it was, here's, uh, bring your favorite three or open these three and then pick which one you're going to start with. Yeah. And once you lose two games with it, it's eliminated. So. Like, oh, those are my favorite. So at least you get some choice. So you're not like stuck with that one bad deck. You got like the bad deck of the night, you know, yeah. and you're like, oh man, I got to make this work against all these other decks. <laughs> That's oh. true. Especially if someone gets a broken one. Yeah. And then after the tournament, I'm like trying to buy it off them. <laughs> yeah. Like, please give me your deck. You don't need that deck. Here, I'll give you this. I'll, I'll trade you 10 decks for that deck. All right, let's end the poll. I know what you suckers want. You guys are all cult to the new. 75% voted for play with new booster decks only. Oh, I figured, you, yeah. You guys are addicted. But then addicted. that's good because we also want to do that. It, this is exactly what I was just talking about. You guys are addicted. You just want to see new cards. You just want to open new packs. You, you guys have problems, okay? You have addictions. Not like me. I don't have addictions. <laughs> oh, Four Walls says I had almost 150 Keyforge decks at one time. I don't even know that's how many it? we have. I probably had like 30 or 40 in my own. We only played for the first two sets. But even when that first set launched, we went to Origins. We played in so many side events, so many tournaments. Yeah. I bought boxes like, man. That was when we had some disposable income. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone who supports us on YouTube and Patreon <laughs> to allow us to buy anything nowadays. I appreciate it. <laughs> Since doing this full time, I appreciate it. But yeah. I hope to get to the point where like I can play in a... I would only play local, though. I, I got to be smart with money, right? Like, I can't oh, just blow sure. it. That's the other thing with these. I try to avoid collectible card games. This is a collectible card game. Key Forge was a collectible card game. Even though I kind of, like, hit it a little bit. You just need one deck. That's all. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to open these. Do I don't have a tab? No. Where's your little knife? I don't want to wreck the cards, though. Oh. Oh, here. There is a thing at the top, like a little... Okay, well, you do them then. Okay, so we don't need these old and busted decks. This is going in the garbage. Nobody wants to see these anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but let's look at some how they're uh, the, the Forge Born are different, even. Get out of here. Doesn't everybody love that sound? Hold on, hold on. Yeah, they smell like Keyforge. They're printed at the same place as some of the Keyforge decks are printed at. Yeah? That's what it smells like, yeah. Yeah, it even feels like the Keyforge cardstock and stuff, right? Like, it's not it does, like... It does feel like, yeah. It, that... It's like the more kind of throwaway uh, cardstock. I feel like they stink, though. Yeah, but that's what Keyforge smell like, too. Oh. Like, the ones like they don't Germany smell stuff. good. 
So in, in there's a slot always for a token card. So we're just adding to our pile of the tokens. So our minions, your minions or whatever. So, and they're two-sided, right? So I have Spell Sprite and Spell Swarm. So as you buy booster packs, you'll get your, your minions to add. But a starter set has some already. Um, so, but you can just keep building up. Okay, uh, so here is the red deck. The Curious Eminent Contingent. And we've seen Burnout. We, we have that in our other deck. Uh, I'm here. kind of curious to actually not go through the deck. I know. I, like I, card by card, right? We don't have to, know. Because I don't want to know. I just want to show. Or how, here, or I can do it on here, is. maybe. Uh, let's do oh, it yeah. this way. Hold on. So there. Oh, that's different. Look at how the deck number on this one. Eight. Is that how many decks they've made? I, I don't know. That's crazy. Oh, wow. Maybe not. I don't know. But. Wow. Oh, and you know what's funny? This one has way less rares in it, right? Like, way less rares. But if you look on, like, um, look how many yellows. I, I don't know the rarity symbols exactly, but some of them are like... What's the rare? The one with the yeah, I'll show squiggle you on it? There it is. Uh... I looked at it when I originally read the rules, but then I didn't, um... Yeah, I don't know where it is on the page, but there was a, um... Oh, glossary icons, I think. Yeah, right here. So, Soul Forge Fusion Rarity Icons. This is confusing as crap. Uh, obviously ignore the left column, we're not playing with Kickstarter stuff, right? But then the Alpha set, they're using different symbols. So the bigger the circle with the border around it, the better. Oh, I, I haven't seen any reds. Red? Yeah, look for reds. No. I want a refund. We didn't get any reds? That's it. What's that symbol beside that one? Oh, we have one that, that snuck in from another faction. Oh. Um, which is... Spoilers. Hold on. It's here. Hold on. Oh, I'm your sure. mic is cutting out. Who's mine or Rob's? Yeah, I'm probably pulling on the cable. Who's mic? Who's mic? We got excited there. Um, but if you see here, look at, see the little symbol on here? It, it, you sometimes, we saw this in Keyforge, uh, you can have uh, a creature come from another faction. Oh. So this creature is from like the blue faction is in this green deck. Oh, so blue. A betrayer, is that what they're, yeah, betrayer cards. Oh, betrayer cards. we have one. Yeah, we didn't have any in our first four. I was like, I must be super betrayer. rare. So here, look, we have an Epoch Soldier who snuck in this green deck from the blue. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, yeah, we have new heroes, too. Look, we've never seen Nova before, right? Oh, our no. other green hero was... Um, oh, this one's the same. Yeah, our other green guy was this guy. Oh, and our purple's different as well. We don't have this girl. Nice. Okay, good. Variety. That's all I like to see. Raising Dead. Oh, oh, yeah, minion strategy right here. Oh, we haven't decided who's playing which colors. Yeah, we're following Matt. Oh, I see. Who, who, though? We have to, like, roll off or something. Uh, Don't let Matthew pick. Uh, that seems unfair. I want to play with the red so bad. Okay, fine. I play with red and green, so you can play with the red. And, and blue again? Was it red and blue? Yeah, and green and purple. I'm fine to play green and purple. Oh, green and purple is probably so good. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Matthew's on Team Mel. I know what he's up to. I know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. No, he's not always on Team Mel because he's on know, your team last but game. But he didn't know at first. Oh, yeah. War of the Ring. He was he's on actually really on Team Hobbit. And then he realized, like, I was Team Hobbit. And then he was like, all right, I guess. <laughs> I guess. If I had Depends to. on the day. <laughs> so I'm, I'm green and purple? I guess. Unless you, yeah, honestly, do you want to play the red? I don't care. I don't care. Let's get Thunder. Okay, I'm just going to look at my things while you do that. Oh, when you play a spell this turn, deal three damage to a creature. Or a player. And this is just one time, I'm assuming, right? When you play a spell this turn, deal three damage to a creature or a player. Yeah. I'm assuming it's just once and then exhaust it, yep. right? Okay. Maybe I do that guy. Right. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> this is gonna be fun. Yeah, I know. I think I'm going with this girl. I'm not looking at the cards in the deck though. No, I'm not either. But if we did look at the cards in the two decks, it might make more sense to play one of these. But we'll. But just... we're just playing blind for fun. This is the yeah. this is the Forgeborn I'm picking. Okay. Just to. Mel's playing there. with Nick Nakia. Yeah. Who raises the dead? You may play mindless zombie minion. Give your minion so it's minion strategy on the first or the second cycle. Sorry, destroy one of your creatures. Play a level one or two creature for free. Oh, <laughs> this is so like good. spamming. This yeah, is this spamming is so good. Ways. Army of the dead. Play up to one zombie brute, which we did not see yet. Zombie brute is this minion six six. <laughs> In each In lane. <laughs> <laughs> hope it doesn't get that far it just looks fun so yeah, i'm yeah. picking this one for the fun all right all. i could play this one sunder who has gathering storm when you play a spell this turn deal three damage to a creature or player i can play a spell for free in the third cycle and in the fourth play up to two spell swarm minions well that's not as good i only get to play two minions you get to fill the board but then with... watch my lanes all be full okay and then i don't get to do it okay what about this one uh I could do this one, play a gizmo minion, upgrade a level one card in your hand. I do like the upgrading stuff in the blue. I do love that a lot. This has the level three ability of your unused Forgeborn. Oh, what? This can use this ability? Oh, son of a gun. Oh, well, if I get to play spells for free, yeah. Hey, maybe I do this one. Was that last one? See, this is the problem. I'm not looking in the deck, so I don't even know if I have any spells really. Like, well, is, is there a certain number of spells? Maybe there's only one. Maybe there's, but between both. maybe there's three and they all suck. You know what I mean? This is why you should look through your deck before you pick this, but whatever. But between both, you're going to have spells. Uh, what's this one? Repurpose. Choose a creature. If it's replaced this turn, you may reanimate it. Oh, I don't remember what that's I, I forget what reanimate is again. I think it just comes back into play. Like full health? I think. There's a creature. If it's replaced this turn, yeah, I think it's just like you get to re-put it into play. Oh, okay. But we can check. On the rules. Just for anybody out there that's curious, my deck name that I've chosen is the Prisoners of the Irregular Skin. Well, that's that's which color? Your purple. Purple. <laughs> I have the curious. Eminent Contingent, and the Humming Academics Uncles. Do I have on this one? I'll scan these in later, I guess. Thornesius Carnivorous Raiders. Where the heck? Sorry, gotta load up the glossary, which mm -hmm. was on that same page that I closed back then. Uh, Reanimate, I'm looking for... The enemy just says, play a card from your banish pile. Oh, so then after it's replaced, yeah, then it comes back. Okay. That's cool. All right. I'm just going to do quite yeah, a drop. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll play this one. We don't have sleeves. I'll play this one. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I just want to break it up, so. So let's put it on my... Oh, man. Look at the art on this guy. Yeah. Oh. Chaos hides patient minds. Cool. Okay. You want to roll for who's going first? Sure. One. 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 Three. Three. Whoa. Six. Five. Five. That was exciting. <laughs> You're first. <laughs> yeah, the colors are like off on some of these cards. That's bad. Yeah, sleeve your cards. <laughs> I don't know if you can see those two. Probably not that noticeable. Maybe it's not. 
Maybe they're fine, actually. Maybe it's just the lights in the room. Yeah, I think it's just the lights, because depending on how I hold it. No, they're off. Yeah? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they are. Yeah, see the corners up here? So you have them all facing the right direction? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. I know, I thought the same thing. Yeah, just not, not the most quality printer, but again, if you're playing serious, leave it up. Just leave it up. Yeah, that's the thing, if like, uh, yeah, because they're printed separately, right? right. And it's like they might be printed from different places, and you're trying to mix two halves together. Yeah, and one of the inks might be running out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, boom. Do you want to cut or no? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so you're first, right? Mm hmm Okay. Give me one minute. This one's for you, Matthew. <laughs> you said that so sensually. Yep. This 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 game is for you. You want to see it? You got it. What the wow, hell are these? These cards? are interesting. They're I, very different. Hey, literally, my all five cards in my hand are not in the other decks. I swear, I I've agree. never seen them before. I'm pretty sure. This is cool. All right. Well, we're going to start. Oops, sorry. No, Mike. Uh, if you've ever seen Keyforge before, each half deck is fixed. They have a deck list. They have a QR code. They have a specific name on the cards. You can't mix the half decks. There is no deck building other than taking two half decks and putting them together of different colors. So there's four factions in the game. You can't put two halves of the same faction together. But you can change each half, so I can have uh, this red half and keep trying different other purple, green, or blue halves with it over and over, but different ones. Trying to find a really good pair. And uh, no, you can't alter the cards in the deck. It's if They're algorithmically generated, trying to be balanced, all that kind of stuff. I don't know if they truly are. We thought that Keyforge they would be, but that was not the case. So there were trash decks and there were amazing broken decks. It's just the thing, but... It got better over time, I think, a little bit, but that first set was a little wonky. Um, I don't know if they fix it in this game or not, but uh, no. And like I said, on the bottom of the cards, you can see there's like a name right here, the Curious Eminent Contingent. That's a unique name only to this deck, number 4497, whatever. Uh, no, maybe that's a card number or something. Yeah, I think it's a card number, and all three of your upgrades will be the same number. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, because there's variations on each card too, so... Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm gonna play Zimuth, I think is how you say that. Uh, so when does, when this is destroyed, reanimate it to the same lane with plus two attack. We had no reanimate in our other decks. None, none. This uh, is so cool. So when this is destroyed, reanimate it to the same lane with plus two attack and it loses all printed ability. So only one time, this will come back. And I'll find his number two. A zombie warrior. Oh, he's come. <laughs> he's coming back with new, uh, new clothes on. <laughs> yeah, some of the art changes on each of them as they that. go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is that. Go ahead. I don't know if I'm going to play... Oh, uh, no, I should probably not say. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter, because it, it, I'm not damn, like messing with your creatures. But look at this silly card. Deal five damage to the enemy player. You may also have this deal five damage to you. If you do, this is free. <laughs> <laughs> Just take a little taste of the damage. You, you, you can cut the cost. But that's the thing. What I would do is pair this kind of stuff with a healing deck, you know? Yeah. Like, a, like oh, a purple, yeah. right? And then you have heal coming back and then you're damaging yourself. But it's like this blue probably doesn't do healing. It's all about like armor and stuff like that. So uh, it's not the best pairing, I don't think. We'll see. Mm. I literally drew in three spells, two creatures. <laughs> not the best. Uh, let's see. Yeah. 
Oh, Rob, you needed that card last time. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, All right. I'm going to play a Lightning Tamer. Uh, probably not. This guy's kind of crappy, actually. Oh, when I play a spell, I give him extra two attack. Yeah, that might be fine. Uh, deploy. You may play a spell sprite minion. When you play a spell, give this guy plus two attack. All right. So this is what I'm doing. I don't know. Okay. He's going in the back. Oh, yeah. Back. Uh, lightning Tamer. Sucky. So sucky. That guy sucks. Yeah, but maybe his third one is like phenomenal. Maybe his ability is crazy. No? No, he never even plays like the good minion. Oh, he that. just makes and him he, stronger, right? Yeah, he makes himself stronger, but only if I play a spell. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that, but uh, you're playing purple. Oh, yeah, here's some more red ones. Well, so what does he make? Spell. Swarm of minions. Oh, sprite minion. Then he goes a spell swarm. I see. So sprite is only for the first one. When you play a spell, give us plus two attack. Okay, sure. Uh, here I don't know. Go ahead. I'm gonna play Portal Shade, which has stealth, and it can activate. Destroy this to give a creature plus five. Attack. Did you know there's ways to swap creatures? That's crazy. Swap in the lane? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't uh, know. No, I just I knew, knew mobile. Mobile, yeah. Nope, there's swapping. Oh, there's swapping. Did not know that. <laughs> I don't have swapping. Yeah, we only have experience with those four decks and they, we didn't see everything, that's for sure. But like you said, I think you said in the beginning of the stream, right? The starter set is likely a little bit more basic in some of the keywords that they use. I don't know if it is. I think those are just random decks or just wow. random. Uh, maybe they chose certain ones to go in starter sets. Like only certain keywords. Maybe. I don't something. know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Crazy. I think it's just all random. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, that's it, right? Oh, no, you have one more action. I do. All right. Well, I have guys in play that want me to play spells, so I might as well play <laughs> two of them if I can. Uh, I'll do the deal five damage to an enemy player. Okay. And then I may also have this deal five damage to me <laughs> so that I can play it for free. But when I play a spell, both of these guys get, get bumped. They're now still sucky, but less sucky. Okay. So dumb. And Flame Jet uh, will go here. I'll upgrade Flame Jet. <laughs> that would sound. These are the stupidest cards I'm playing right now, uh, but whatever. Okay. Now what should we do? <laughs> okay, no, let's not do that. Okay, uh, let's... I'm gonna... Like... <laughs> Energy prison. Get out of here. I'm going to give a creature minus si seven attack. That's like permanent. This is just ongoing. And then I'm going to upgrade a card in your hand and discard it. So let's do this guy's going to lose his seven attacks. Uh, so here, I'll just put this on it actually for now. Yeah. How do we do zero now? I, I never thought there's no solution for that. I'll just do that for now. Do we have more of these little tokens? No. The star said only these are only even tokens. Those are like, those are like, this is what comes out of the whole punch machine. <laughs> You know, they, they just went to a school and found these in the hole punch. This is not even a token. It's just a scrap of hole punch paper. Like, they're so crap. That's the well, amateur, amateur hour this I'm game. I'm going to use it, though, for this yeah. purpose, because... So now we need, like, we need... Uh, zero... We need dice to have a blank side? Oh, like... We'll just tell our daughter to grab more hole punch papers <laughs> from school. <laughs> Can they go below... Go to zero attack? I don't know. Yeah. I just can't go below can't... zero. Are you sure? Can't go to just a minimum of one, maybe? No. I, think. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, so minus seven on attack. Uh, uh -oh. Then energy prison, I'm going to find the upgrade for. And put that in my discard. And then I get to upgrade a card in hand, then discard it. I went with the creature last time. This time I should go with the spell. <laughs> That's what I should have done. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna upgrade Meta Insight. This is the one I was talking about. 
give up two enemy creatures. I was going to do the steal. That's why I was laughing too, because oh. I, I could have taken him down to zero, reduced him down so he wouldn't kill this guy, swap them so he's doing zero attack over here, you know? It would have been so epic, but I wanted to get that other card upgraded, so um, this made more sense. So this one, I'll upgrade Meta Insight. Yeah, that's hilarious. Swapping, it brings it to a whole other level for me, because there, uh, in times in that last game where I would have oh, yeah. to swap, you know, when you had the breakthrough and stuff, Yep, would have been super cool. Meta Insight. I'm down to one card in hand at the end of a turn. Look at that. Okay. All right. Uh, attack. <laughs> yep. All attack here for three. Okay, so he's down to one health, and you get hit okay. for three. So he goes here, but then uh, he reanimates to the same lane with plus two uh, attack. Yep. And then his a text box is blank. Sure. Uh, so I can put him like this if we want to know that. Sure, yep. Yeah. So that we don't do that again. Okay. And then here, attack. Oh, nothing, nothing here. And then zero attack. Yep. <laughs> we take zero. Okay, discard the cards. <laughs> switch who's first player. I move these guys up. Okay. Oh, break out some oath sworn dice and use a miss. Oh, okay. I like where you're, I like what you're thinking. I don't have them nearby though. They are in. A, they're all put away actually. Back in the box. <laughs> oh, these are funny cards. I know, there's some cool stuff. Like I'm getting, I'm blown away. Now I see the addiction. It's like Keyforge. You're going to want to buy decks to see what other new variations of characters and card combos. And Oh. I wish I knew this was a thing. There's, if cards are in certain lanes. That's a thing in the game already? Yes. I thought that would matter like in set two. Dang, of the art. I wish I knew that because I would just always play them like haphazardly, I, but. I, does anyone know if the starter sets are made more basic on purpose? Because they're already messing. It feels like the complexity level of the game uh, it, it got advanced, at least in our starter set to the booster set. So maybe you should never buy like more than one starter set. And if you want more crazy stuff, buy boosters, but I don't think so. I feel like we just got lucky, but maybe they are doing that. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. It's interesting. Oh, that might be. So I'm first. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I think this card. This oh, card. Oh, this I card. Do I have. know. Yeah, just one so far I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I, this one. Oh, I know this card too. I just played with it. Might have been called something different. All right. Because the art is awesome on this one, I don't know what is <laughs> happening here. Oh. Conflagrate. Deal two damage to each of up to two different creatures and or players. Increases damage by one for each mage you have in play. Well, I have one mage in play, so I will do three damage and three damage and wipe those guys off the board. That's how it's worded, for sure. <laughs> just kidding. I know, it like, just works out, to right? Each of up to two. Yeah, wow. Mage combos. All right, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to play Spell. Let's just get it before I do it so I don't forget. And uh, you may play a Mindless Zombie. Mindless Zombie. Let's put the Mindless Zombie here. Oh, cool. It's another free one. And if you gained health this turn, this is free. But I did not gain health this turn, so it's not free. So that would have been cool if I could have. All right, go ahead. That is so cool. Oh, we should be in the back. Uh, should Rob's cards have gained another plus to attack? Oh, yes. He played more than yes, one yes, spell yes. Turn? Yeah, because it's passive. Yeah, you're right. Five and five. Yeah, that's right. Every time I play spells. 
Yep, yep, yep. Okay, uh, because I love this is I think my favorite blue card. I, I don't know. I'm like obsessed with it. Oh. Upgrade a card in your hand and discard it. You may choose a creature, deal one damage to it for each level two and level three card in your discard pile. So let's uh upgrade. I'm gonna upgrade this card, you know, the hibernating glider. Oh yeah. I think. I like that guy. Yeah, I'll upgrade the hibernating glider. Okay, and then I count one, two, three, four, five, six damage. I'll just do it right there. And then I have to upgrade Lucid Echoes. And since Lucid Echoes was a spell, C -c -c combo. I know this isn't as crazy as you were doing to me last game. Jason Zilla, thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome, Welcome to the channel. Thank you. That's it, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to play another spell because you ruined my last one where I get to play another Barna minion. Packs. Or another zombie, right? Each enemy creature, minus two, minus two for each minion you haven't played. Uh oh. <laughs> Would have been better before. Yeah, yeah, no, oh, no. they go in the back. So uh, both of these guys are minus two attack, minus two health. So this guy's just gone, mm -hmm. and this guy's down two, and then minus two. <laughs> They're fun cards. Okay. Right. I was hoping I would have more zombies and got both of them. Fight time? Yep. So these guys just take each other out? Yep. Minion fight! Zombies to the rescue. Okay. And then discard right. the other cards. Switch who's first player. Four, five. So last one from cycle one. Oh man. Oh wow. Oh yeah, I was gonna show you. Um that's the one that had the um That's the invader or whatever. That's it's the one that had it, if this is in your leftmost lane, give it plus three attack. If it's in your rightmost lane, give it plus three health. <laughs> Which we didn't know was a thing, and I was that's cool. wasn't sure. Warrior. I didn't end up playing that because I went the zombie route, but What's the one that you have snuck in your... It is that guy, Epoch Soldier. That is the... Oh, it, that's betrayer. a blue card normally? Yeah, that's normally a blue oh, card. That's a betrayer, yeah. I see. I know it looks like robot or whatever, scientist -y. Oh, this is so funny. I don't know if you're even still doing it, but oh, that'd be so funny. Okay, because this is funny. It's a dinosaur, and I like the art. I'm going to play this guy, because it's funny. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Magnivorous Basher? Yeah, has breakthrough. Oh. When an enemy player plays a spell, it gets plus two. <laughs> Teeth, bone, jagged scales. <laughs> this is crap. And I'm going to play it in a second. Rigged. <laughs> but I don't know. Rigged. If you're actually going <laughs> to. <laughs> this is silly stuff. This is a feel like keyboard silliness for sure, which I love. Uh... Oh, that's cool. I want to play all these guys. Okay, because this one's funny, I have to do it. And it's the mage. The enemy player may choose to take three damage. If they don't, you may play a level one spell for free. <laughs> mm. I'll put this here and upgrade the mage. No, I'll let you play a spell. Storm caller. <laughs> uh, oh, I see. Yeah, the enemy player may choose to take two damage. If they don't, okay, I get to play a spell for free. Mm -hmm. I'll just give him plus two attack plus with two. breakthrough. Let's do attack. Oh, 
<laughs> Daniel says, do you even still have spells? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hmm. All right, I'll play Electronet. Give a creature minus five. If it has increased, like this is free. But I think but I it think just means it's above its starting. Yeah, so which if it, it like won't. you beefed it up so much, this would have been good in that last match. Oh yeah. Where I could have been reducing it and it would have been free, so I do extra. No, it's just gonna have so, two. Uh, so you're gonna yeah, uh, you're gonna reduce it down to zero, but then I'm gonna give plus it plus two because yeah. of that spell. That's frustrating. I'm first player as well, right? Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Your last card, go. I don't know what to play. I feel like I want to up. I want to play this one, but I feel like I want to upgrade this one. I know it's frustrating. I know it's like play for now. Or play for the future, right? Exactly. Putting a creature in play could be for the future, but it might be very temporary. But you also get to upgrade that one. No, I'm going to take... Uh, I'm going to take my chances that this one is a really good card later. I'm going to play this one, yeah. Pack Bartok. Deploy. Give the next creature you play this to. Oh, you gotta but, play that guy first. But I can also then give this plus two for each of your other creatures and play. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. So he gets plus two. Two, four. The only four attack? Yep. I'm going to play Heavy Artillery. Whoa. Bring in the big guns. All right. Uh, you may give a creature plus four attack. Hmm. I think this one. Uh, 11. Okay. And give a creature minus four attack. That was tempting. She's only two health, so I kind of want to just get rid of his attack. But I want to get rid of that because it's like I wouldn't get hit. But then I'm trying to like I have health. I want to try to build a board, but that's my play. So I'm gonna take this attack on. I I don't know. I don't. Know. Oh yeah, you do whatever. I mean, we do have these too. <laughs> these... Yeah, but this works right now until I need it. Yeah, like we do have these that came with the game. So you could just put like a minus five attack on there. Somehow slide it under. I think that's what's supposed to happen. It's like minus five attack like that. I don't I don't know. The fiddly weird, but uh okay. So I upgraded that. Oh, excuse me. Possibility we can't use until level two, so we can't use it mm. yet. Never mind. Oh yeah, because you cast a spell. Yeah, so I should just do it here then. Okay. So we'll just move this to here so he would now be a four. And he's at zero. Yeah, and this guy's at zero. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah, I forgot Thank about you. the buff. I forgot about the buff. As did I. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So either way, this character's dying. Like, I have no way to prevent that. But it's going to kill this character as well. Yeah. All right. So attack. This character does nothing with zero. And here... Uh, they take each other out. But this one does breakthrough, so two gets through. The oh, yes, that's right. Up. And then this one's dead. All right, and that is the end of that cycle. So, cycle two.
Okay. Oh, I'm first now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish I saw this last round. Okay. Stormcaller, we just saw her. So the enemy player may choose to take salmon seven damage. If they don't, hold on. What's this? Level one or level two? Let me just make sure I have them. Yep. Uh, the enemy player may t t uh, take seven damage. If they don't, I may play a level one or a level two spell. Uh, I'm not taking seven damage. Come on, man. Do it. Unless there's something here that says if I've taken damage. Where is she? She's in the red. Oh, right here. Yes. Okay. So I'm I'm playing a spell for free. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play Burnout. You may play a Spell Sprite minion. Give your creatures plus two. Spell Sprite minion. And they're getting plus two. So we have 11 here. And three here. And I need to put this Burnout here. This goes here. Okay, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think I'm going to trigger my ability, actually, yes. Uh, you may play a Mindless Zombie Minion. Mm -hmm. Is that crimson? Yeah, he, um, second here. And then, what did that say? Give your minions plus two attack. It's five. That was my ability, so I haven't played a card yet. I think I'm going to then play this one here. So let's upgrade that one. And then this one, oh, this one has aggressive, so it'll move up. And then has deploy. You may replace one of your minions with a level one creature in your banish pile. Which is your only minion? Yep. Which why I want to do that first. So he'll replace with this. <laughs> uh, when an enemy player plays a spell, gets plus two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've used my ability. Hmm. I couldn't replace a guy with zero attack because just the wording on it is I have to replace a minion specifically. So that guy's not a minion. Mm -hmm. I had to replace. So I had to do that that way. Yeah, I totally did this turn in the wrong order. Totally did this turn in the wrong order. Uh... Yeah, not creature, yeah. I'm gonna play a lightning tamer. 
Oh, oops, this pile. Too red. Where are you, buddy? Right there. I'm gonna play a lightning tamer deploy. You may play a spell swarm a minion. Actually. That's only guy hits only for one. Right. This guy? Yeah. yeah. And then when you play a spell, yeah, see, I did it backwards. I should have put these guys out. So when I play this, if you then would have maybe took the seven damage because you don't want me to play a spell because then these guys all get buffed. Mm. But I, I messed that up. But that's okay. My bad. Yeah, My first time. Okay. What do you got? My last action, right? I'm going to... Yeah. Last action. Then I, wish we... I could have done something else, but that's fine. Uh, that guy hits for one. That guy hits for three. Let's go here. Soothing Ranger. Okay. Deploy. If you have no empty lanes, which I have one empty lane, so that doesn't matter. But I do have another one. Deploy. I gain two health. Oh, wrong way. Uh, that's me done. All right. Attack here. You attack for three, so she has one, yep. and I attack back for two. Two, so this guy goes down to seven health left. Um, here you just kill him. Yep. Here you hit for three. Yep. I have three left, and I hit for five. Okay. And breakthrough still happens on the bottom? No, only no, in the only front on row. Top. Okay, sorry, you hit for three with that oh, guy, yeah, right? this spell spray should go over here. Yeah, okay. hitting for th three, yeah. Okay. And then here you hit me for one, and he's aggressive. I just hit you back for one. Oh no! Alrighty. Oh, I wish I had that last turn. Go ahead. Yep, sorry, one second. Hmm. Let's just put this guy here, who has an ability, when this is destroyed, upgrade a level one card in your discard pile. Mm -hmm. Uh, this pile? Because he's going to be destroyed by all that damage. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know that guy. That's <laughs> my favorite guy in the purple. Agreed. Where he gets killed and he upgrades. Yeah. I love that theme. And then do I have level ones? Uh, yeah, I have one. One level one card. Yeah, but maybe it cycles before that. And you don't have any when he dies. Well, this is going to kill I know, him right I, now. Maybe. Unless you're going to kill him maybe off. Maybe I can swap <laughs> some stuff around. Uh, okay. Huge. All right. I don't know the best time for this. We do this one. Okay, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play. This is so dumb. I'm gonna play Flame Jet. I'm mm -hmm. gonna deal seven to you, and I'll also deal seven to me. 
just for because I can play it for free. But are you trying to go to bed? Is that the problem? No, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, let's speed this game up. <laughs> like, I'm done. Uh, no, but I have these two guys in play that also get busted from spells. Oh, and, I, and so does he. Yeah, I just don't know. It's like sure. <laughs> Uh, this guy gets four attack. Okay. Uh, this goes here. And it, uh, <laughs> he says, oh, well, why? Because <laughs> I have spell buffs. I'm building up to this one. Where I can do nine damage. <laughs> Are you dealing? Okay, so I go to 30. No, this is, I'm not doing that. Oh, this sorry. is just going my upgrade pile. I'm just showing what, what may happen later. <laughs> no, I thought you were doing that now. Okay, but that was free. That was free. That was free. <laughs> Okay, and then now I will play my favorite blue card, Lucid Echoes, level two. Upgrade two cards in your hand and discard them. Okay, then I'll do some damage in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, I will upgrade. Upgrading the hi hibernating uh, maybe not. I'll upgrade the this one's funny. Like the art just looks funny. Um but anyways, this one's aggressive. When this damage is a player, deal that much damage to an enemy creature. So it's like kind of like opposite of breakthrough a little bit. It's weird. Um yeah, I'll upgrade this one. And I'll upgrade digitize. Okay. Uh wind spark. Okay, and then this says, uh, then discard them. You may choose a creature, deal, oh, so we all, I played a, oh, another a spell. spell, but I, I think that guy's gonna die, I'll probably pick him. Um, but this one will get three more, this one will get three more. Okay, uh, you may choose a creature, deal two damage to it for each level two and three card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 16 damage to it for each of those in the pile. Hmm. I guess I'll deal the 16 all to that three health guy right there. Sure, you just came back from the dead anyway. It's just fine. Yeah, I don't need to deal with that. Uh, and that was that. And you still have one more card, right? Because that was still your first action. Yeah. And you only have one more card to play. I think so. Yeah, yeah, that was my first, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I still have four. I've only done one thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I did the upgrade that got cards out of hand, a uh, spell that was free. Yeah, you did two spells. Yeah. And then an so, upgrade. So, okay. Yeah, so. Okay. No, just so I know. Okay. I'm gonna have an empty hand at the end of a turn. That's the first time I've ever done that. That's awesome. All right. I think I'm going to play a spell. Uh, which is this one? And it says replace a level one minion. Or sorry, replace a level one creature with an Oak Father minion. All right. You know, replace is not destroyed, just yep. so you know. Uh, so that's already done. Here, replace one. No, that already. Oh, Oak Fathers are 8-8? Eight, eight? <laughs> yeah. I know, I looked and was like, minion. okay. 8-8, eight, eight. wow, with breakthrough? Yeah. That's not a minion. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead, your last card. Yeah, so. I'll do my, um, my Forgeborn's ability, play a Gizmo minion. Combo. Play a Gizmo minion. This just blew my mind. When a creature replaces it, give it plus two, plus two. Okay, I'm gonna put it here. Oh no, here. And then this upgrades the card in my hand, which is this hibernating ice crusher. 
but it's not discarded. Now for my action on the turn, I could replace this dude, and this gives this guy a plus two, plus two. And, hold on, wait for it. Wait for it. He's aggressive. Okay. Or I could have done it on this column and then just smack you, but then you're smacking me for eight, so I probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, I'll just try to take that guy. All right. Empty hand. All right. It's fighting. Here. Uh, so I'm dealing two damage, and you're killing this one. Pickles. Okay, this one I'm dealing four. So he's dead, and you're killing this one. Yep, but don't forget to do the ability on that card. Oh, yeah. Let's do that here. And then here you're doing seven. Yep. Okay. And then here I'm dealing eight, but he's not dead yet, and you're dealing eight, but he's dead. So you have two remaining on that one? Yeah. Okay, and then... Thanks to the gizmo he ate. When this card is destroyed, upgrade a level one card in your discard pile. That's the only one I have. All right. <laughs> that blue and red deck really plays differently. I know yeah, that... Yeah, it's very different. This The red in here is nuts. It's so weird. It's mages and spell focused. Like, I, I didn't... Like, weird. So weird. Your first this turn. Uh, yeah, okay. Play my hibernating glider, level two. Uh, if this is unopposed, give it plus seven attack. So it's eight attack. There's nobody there. It's 10 health. So I need my hibernating glider, level three, going to my discard pile. Okay, I'm going to play a zombie brute minion. Okay. And... There's more damage, so let's put him here. Uh, if you gained health this turn, this is free. It's not, and that's going to level three. That is this one. All right, spell time. I'm gonna play Stone Skin. Give one of your creatures plus five. It may battle an enemy creature. Oh. Now, I don't think it has to be in the same lane. Creature, oh. Creatures that battle deal damage equal to their attack on each other. I don't know if it has to be in the same lane. I'm very curious, because it doesn't say like in its lane or anything. And the word battle, I don't know. It just says creatures that battle deal damage equal to their attack to each other. But I don't know if creatures are allowed to battle outside their lane. Anyone in the chat know, know. who plays this game? I mean, I can do it here and just fight this guy, no problem. But like, it would be funny if I could do it from any lane. I'm just curious. That's a, that's a weird one. I've never seen battle like that before. I uh, personally have never played it. I think we have it in one of the decks. I think you oh, did it to me. I, I don't think I've ever battled outside of the battlefield. Yeah, this is weird. Very weird. We're now battling, not in the battle round. Or in the battle I didn't phase. know that was a thing. I just, yeah, this you is You have cool. to battle in your lane. Okay. kind of makes sense. Thank you, Corvall. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Okay. Uh, so I'll do that here. I'll give this creature uh, plus five. There's three more. And two more. And then, oh, but then he'll die. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. But it's okay. He'll both die. Yeah, that's kind of sucky. Maybe I don't do this. Yeah, maybe I don't do this. Uh, so what would I, oh, yes. Yeah, I just remove five from here. 
Yeah, because like, I'm trying to play spells to buff them up, but if he's going to die, it's kind of stupid. That, um, cool. Oh, because he gets a buff from that too? From the spell? Yeah. Oh, I see. So it's like, I'm trying to make, I want to do it on like uh, one of these other guys and then fight. Okay, so what I'll do instead... Oh, you have to battle in your lane unless the card says you can battle. Yeah, like this card. Can I buff up any creature and then battle any enemy creature no matter what lane they're in? That was the question. Like, how can I resolve this card? Do I have to give it to the guy in this lane so they fight? I know it says it may battle, so I don't have to battle. So I could just buff one of these guys up and not fight. But I want to fight if I can fight with one of these guys who has higher health and won't die when they fight. That's the idea, right? Yeah, that's the tough one. Yeah, I'm not sure. What? Oh, uh, they have, for the rules, battle creatures that battle deal... D oh, that same thing you, you read. Yeah, but it doesn't stay like... When we're resolving combat, is that considered a battle? Yeah, I don't know. Isn't there like an FAQ about specific cards? Yeah. I don't know where that is, though. This is guy called Stone Skin. I know there was a file I found that was like you could look up cards in it. I don't know where that was. I might have it actually. Yeah, it's like an alpha card list. Hold on, I think I have it. Yeah, I found this online. Okay. Whoa. No, no stone skin. No. No. What is in here? Maybe it's not searchable though. No, it should be. What do I search in this thing? All right, let me just scroll. Down to where? No. It would be up, wouldn't it? Yeah. I, I, maybe it just does. There's no issue with it. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I think you can pick any lane because usually cards specify lanes on them in abilities, but. Yeah. I, I think it's any lane because like we've already seen cards that define the lanes and talk about lanes, so I, I think, but like combat is combat. Battle is like its own thing, it's its own keyword, right? Okay. Uh yeah. So I'm gonna do this. And I'll give this guy plus five. So that's plus four. Needs one more. And then these two are gonna battle. So you hit this guy for six. Six, he goes down to four. I put the upgrade in there. I played a spell, so this goes up by three. This goes up by three. And that's me. Mm, nope, well, that's the way I can win this. Yeah, I know. This is how I felt last game, when, except for I think you had more but i was able to put stuff in front of it but this is your last action right and then we fight i think i'm maybe this uh, is like i know my only shot i think is i have to do this that's I why i wanted to really know how that card worked because if like these fought and they're gone i think i still have quite a bit here but we'll see what you can put in front or while it says, I think it's any lane because there is a keyword battle and strike strike is you get to deal the damage without taking it back I think you guys are playing it right. All right. Oh, no worries. Four walls. We're, we're all trying to figure it out. We're all new here, right? If anyone's watching this later, uh, drop it the answer in the comments below with like a timestamp to answer the question. Because some other player in the future might be watching this and they are like, oh, I don't know. Uh, I have that question too. And maybe we can help out some other players too. So learn from our questions and mistakes, you know.
But I think this is my only shot. So I played a zombie brute and I'm playing it in this lane. Mm -hmm. uh, give an enemy creature. Oh, an enemy creature minus two, minus two. Well, it has to be this one to kill that one. Kill that ah, no. Possibly Hyper survive. Hibernating Ice Crusher. I think that's the only way I will survive. I okay. Will survive. Okay. Combat. So Combat. I, I take 12 here, yep. right? Eat it. And here, these two kill each other. Yep. Pew pew. And then here I take 10. Uh, yeah. So, oops, still alive. Wow, good, you pulled oh, out. Nice. But uh, this one I thought was each enemy creature, but I didn't okay. really read it. Okay. Uh, so that's the end of a cycle. Oh no, level up our hero. Flip this. This gets all shuffled in with this. I have to say, this purple doesn't have much heal in it, as your last one does. Like maybe two cards I saw that had heal on them. Yeah, but now that we have options, and like we sit down and pick our favorite two halves, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we could have a pretty dirty game. Like where we start going at each other with like our favorite, you know, two half decks put together, like our play styles. And the cool part is we have multiple of each color. So if I really love purple and you really love purple, you know, I maybe just pick the other one and that maybe works with like the one red that I really like or whatever. You know what I mean? Something yeah. like that. And then the problem still we can though, even play the same color versus the same color, yeah, the and they both be very different. The problem I still see is like in tournament play, everybody's gonna play a red deck. No, not necessarily. I mean, I don't. I don't think so. It I depends mean, I, what the meta is, right? Like you got to answer it, right? So that's when like the shadows problem in the early Keyforge was steel was just so strong, and if you didn't bring it, you were just at a disadvantage. Yeah. So everyone kind of had to have shadows in their deck unless you countered that super hard. But which was to, rare. Yeah, but when someone's playing a red deck that, like, like you can do all these buffs, it's hard. Like, you had the same problem. Once you're buffing but cards But they're all up, low health, so you That's just... exactly what I said to you. But it, it's still, if you can't kill them all, they still stay on the board too long, and they wipe your guys. You, so this side gets a board presence. I just... The exact same thing happened with the other red deck. But we've been having an empty board the whole game. No, we have not. Yeah. every At the end of almost every one, we're, like, both looking at empty boards. We've been very head-to-head. -head. Yeah, okay. I literally, this is all I built up, Mel. You last time had way different. No, but... I'm just saying, I'm I'm not saying that specifically for this. I'm just saying red decks in general. But there is, like, no, because blue has, like, minus attack. So, like, you could definitely nerf this. And then the minus health on the purple, uh, I think, would also help, too. It's, it's not the only faction that does that stuff and controls this. Or just pick a faction with big health. So, like, your guys survive more. I and mean, that's blue, I think, has the health. Pretty sure. But yeah, if you just bring big health to the table, your guys will stick around longer and then maybe outlast these guys. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Not sure. You could be right. I don't like this red as much as I like the other red deck we have. Oh, no? No. I love the spells in that one better, but this one has stuff that works off the spells more, which is neat. So it's like, I don't know, but. <laughs> New, <laughs> New cycle. <laughs> you know what card we're starting out with. <laughs> okay, we're going to do, what is that? Just go. <laughs> whatever. The only way I can get a board presence here. Yeah, yeah, do whatever. Is... It, it's all troll. Put out some zombie brutes. The crazy thing though, Matthew's saying this blue and red is way overpowered. I focused very heavy on the red cards, if you notice. I play the red first, I upgrade the red first, I use the blue only to help me upgrade more red. I've been very pushing the red in this deck hard mm -hmm. because I like the whole mage and spell synergy. Yeah. But if I focused on the blue cards that are in my deck, uh, which I haven't, if you look in my, my banish pile, lots of red. And, and it's only supporty stuff I've done uh, from the blue. But the blue in this deck, I can probably find more of them in here, has this whole robot warrior thing going on, but I have a ton of spells. Look how many blue spells they gave this deck, which you gave me, uh, well, Matthew gave me. <laughs> Matthew gave me this blue deck, which literally has one, two, three, four, five, six, 
Maybe more spells, because I've maybe upgraded some of them. I have, because I upgraded that other one, the one that levels up cards. Oh, maybe I didn't. Did I not do that? I forgot to put this in my deck, right? Well, did you level up twice? That yeah, card? yeah, I did I, I did the upgrade of it, I think. You maybe two in there? Let's see. Yeah, oops. Maybe yeah, because you know why? I do this when I save it and then clean it up at the very end. Yeah, see? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I did I'll shuffle up and fix it. But yeah, because that's the one that's the weird one where I upgrade from hand, then mm -hmm. I gotta do the damage, then I gotta remember not to upgrade it till after I'm done. That's why I don't know. I like to put the card down, get the I know, but I'm right not allowed away. with that card. It literally says on the card, do not upgrade this till you banish it. Like, don't put it in your discard pile because it messes with the math on it. So this, uh... Yeah, I'll just shuffle over again. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I should have a level three in here, maybe? Yeah, I missed another one, probably. Yeah, I only have 19. <clears throat> oh, I didn't count. But I was doing like weird upgrading things. No, I'm good. Oh, hibernating ice crusher I should have. He was the other weird one that I leveled up in my hand, then played him right after to end the turn. Okay. So he should be in my deck too. That's the other one I messed up. Caught them. Caught them before they mattered because they would matter now in this cycle. Yeah. Now I have 20 in my deck. Yeah, I got excited because those ones are weird ones. And I'm also playing these cards for the first time. But weird. Uh, when I upgraded in the hand, that's the first one I had where I upgraded in hand and it stayed in the hand. So then I was excited after and just played it, which I still should have upgraded it again. But I was thrown off because I just upgraded it. All right. There you cut that. So now I have the 20 cards in my deck that I should have. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying with the blue is, it, yeah, it's just different. The blue is weird, but they, there's a ton of spells, which it's crazy because I'm playing a red deck that has all this spell stuff, even literally on the guy it says, play a spell for free when you play a spell this turn. Okay, mm -hmm. like this is obviously a red deck focused on spells and the blue deck is loaded with spells. Yeah, so it's like a good pairing. Yeah, it's like what I would expect if I saw these red cards in a Keyforge deck, right. you know, give me spells from the other factions Work that together. help them. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. So that's what's kind of happening. But again, playing all these spells doesn't really build up my board that much, but uh, I've tried. Okay, so... Uh, Your turn. I'm... You... I those just, out? Yep. Uh... But I played this, who doesn't get upgraded again. Mm. Windspark Elemental. B, be aggressive. When this damage is the player, deal that much damage to an enemy creature. And it hits for eight. Mm -hmm. Be, be aggressive. Yeah, and there's a the thing. When you draw into aggressive creatures, when you're going second, or defenders, when you're attacking, I mean, defenders are always kind of good, but the aggressive when you're on the defense, like sometimes you just like, you hit the lottery. And sometimes I play a game and every aggressive creature I draw is when I'm going first, which is like kind of annoying. Um, but it worked out here, that's for sure. Well, I think I gotta do this because he's gonna die anyway. So let's just put that guy there. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> Four walls. How many? How many decks do you have for this game now? <laughs> like, I'm curious off the key, off the Kickstarter, or whatever. How many like starter boxes, booster boxes, add-on decks, whatever the heck the Kickstarter did. I don't know. Or how many do you have pre-ordered from stores? I'm curious. How all in are you in on this? Knowing your addiction you had in KeyForge, I'm curious how much you're in. 
I just played this guy. This is a guy that reanimates to this lane. Then last action. Mm-hmm. Good thing I remembered to upgrade him. Oh, then it's over. Yeah. Bead from the shadows. Hibernating ice crusher. Be be aggressive. And he is for 17. And nothing to defend there. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, this one didn't really have health. Yeah, it's more about the minion stuff. Like we said, when we read her card, it kind of said, like, you'd be throwing minions all over the place. Yeah. And some of the... Yeah. Now, if I had the other red deck that burned more, I'd be burning up these minions. You'd have less to block me with. I didn't have much burn in this deck. It was, like, more about just nerfing attack. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of burn. Yeah. But burn's better because it removes things in front, damage hits the player. Minusing their attack, they're still there to eat up damage sure. to prevent it from hitting the player. Or replace them for bonuses. Yeah. That's true. Use the forge, Rob. Use the forge. This has the... Oh, yeah. I forgot to do the spell for free. Yeah, but whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I could have burned, like, one of your guys, but it's like, eh. But I was going to do funny when I was giggling. I was like, I could do this and nerf your two zombies and then swap them. But they're like, you know, they're both the same. Oh, yeah. Just for fun. <laughs> I, I was just... like, ha ha, gotcha. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, okay. I was already in love with this game. <laughs> I, I know. You watch the start of the stream, most people left. And when I was saying all the negatives about the game, and I, I'll again reiterate what I think this game needs to do to improve and maybe why it won't succeed. Um, but... I, I, like, I already was in love with the cards in the starter box and the games we were playing, mixing up the colors and stuff. But now, after seeing even more from these boosters and what else the game does, now I want more cards to play with. Mm -hmm. And I want to now start mixing these with the other ones. Like, oh, yeah, oh my God. I do, like, guys, the level up thing... Okay, I see Chad mentioning it in the chat. I'm a little concerned about the upgrade fiddliness. Yes, it's silly. It's stupid. It is a little bit. On paper, it's dumb. You can tell it's just like kind of coming from an app and it should be done digitally. The fact we're putting 100 dice, like I literally played with Mel earlier and we were like this. We're like... Oh yeah, it's like a line. Yeah, we had characters that had like dice on them like this, you know, and, and it's getting silly, right? It's just stupid. And you're like, man, this would be so easy in a proper digital app. Not a tabletop simulator mod. That's amateur hour. But a real digital app made by a software studio, like, you know, like the Root digital app, the, uh, you know, like the Wingspan digital app, like the Gloomhaven digital, digital app, like a real digital app that actually keeps track of board state and rules and helps get players into the game with less barrier, less bottlenecking, less overhead, and just cleans up the fiddliness. This, you can tell, is a digital game that they made a paper version of, but really it's like, should be digital. But I love tabletop gaming physically on a table. So selfishly, I love that I can play with the cards. And once I get used to the dice, and once I get used to the upgrading, once you actually do the upgrading, personally, I love the upgrading. I get hooked. I'm hooked on it. I love digging through these decks and finding the new level and going, please show up later. And the faster <laughs> I upgrade, the faster I get it in here, the faster it comes out, the faster I'm doing big, crazy effects. It's like Epic the Card Game with big, splashy effects. But that game, you could do them like right away. And it was just a crazy mess. This still has the refined growth and level up to like big, epic turns, which are super fun. And, and yes, I hate cleaning up after. It sucks. And in an app, obviously, you'd just be like, done, shuffle next. Yeah. Pick two decks next. I don't mind cleaning up. I find it... It's fine. It's not difficult. I'm nitpicking in there. Yeah. But I'm telling you guys, looking at this game before, I thought the upgrade thing looked cool, but looked silly. Even I keep, at, at Gen Con, when I look at the game, I'm like, I want to check your game out. And they're like, yeah, here's some decks, whatever. And I'm like, all right, I'll try it. And they're like, we'd be happy if you played on your channel. But like, you go ahead, just try it. Like, we're no pressure. Here you go. I'm like, I appreciate that. Thank you. But like, I just want to play it, you know, and, and they gave us some decks and some mats and we went home and the other day I cracked it out and I went, I don't know about this game. It looks really simple when I read the rules, 
but most good games are simple rule sets, but like deep and, str and strategic. Once you get the cards and see the combos and the design and the, and the play flow, that's where the depth and the replayability and you're hooked. Great games are simple to learn, but like so deep and fun to master. And this has that. This has that. And, and the leveling up, once you actually do it, like, again, right until I did it after the first game, like, probably the second or third time I upgraded, or maybe when I saw my second cycle and started drawing into the upgraded cards, I was like, oh, my God. Like, mm -hmm. I am hooked. Like, the I love looking at this deck and seeing I only had this many level twos left. Obviously, this is blue being silly with all those upgrade effects. But then I'm like, wow, which... Look at all the reds I went to level three on and look at all the blues I didn't. Right. But I could play this deck again. And do the opposite. And start doing a little mix of both or more of the blue. Or maybe this is always the way it kind of goes, depending on what cards you see when early with other cards in your hand. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you guys, we didn't show it today because we didn't play with the same cards again. But I tell you, if I literally clean this red and blue deck up and play Mel again with her purple and green, maybe we switch out our Forgeborn. But even if we don't, Maybe the cards I draw and the plays I make to answer her plays or to play in later, my upgrade deck will look different. The cards that are still on the board will look different. It will be a different game, I promise you. We tested that theory out with a bunch of games with the same cards. And then you start blowing your mind when you're like, wait, let me switch that green with a different green. Yeah. And then you're like, wait, this deck works completely different now. Holy... And now I'm going to use a different Forgeborn that works better with these purples. Like if I find a green Forgeborn that works better with these purple cards. Yeah, cardboard crack for real. I, I like the upgrading, the lane combat I thought was going to be cheesy. But we've been playing lots of games lately that it, it, positioning matters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like the battling at battlefields like in Sorcerer. The Summoner Wars moving around and where to spawn things and yeah. stuff. I really love that addition, even in Keyforge, uh, having to like where you're deploying things and oh, all, yeah, the flanks like, and all that stuff. Yep, yep. I love that little addition to card games. I, I think I need that now. And maybe it's the board gamer in me. Like originally, I was like heavy card gaming, but I think I love that little uh, added layer to it of the lane stuff. Well, now also that I know that there is cards in here that affect their. Yeah. They change or get, have an ability based on where yeah. they are in the lane. Yeah, it'll get crazier as they advance the sets. They'll get sillier with it. Just look at Keyforge, right? Mm -hmm. Same designer, everything, you know, the, the, it got nuts. And we didn't even go further in, like, the second set. Like, we have newer sets, but we haven't delved in. But I did look into them all with, like, cards that were, like, you know, giant-sized cards in Keyforge that joined together and stuff. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, they, they went crazy with it. And the whole thing with, like, things jumping in between the, the line and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, Which, I mean, this game does have the, the mobile or mobility or yeah, something. Yeah. You can move cards around. Yeah. That's the other thing. Uh, this deck had no mobile in it for the blue. But the other deck we have has a uh, bunch of mobile. Yeah. Which just lets you move things around between lanes. Yeah, I'm just... Here, I can clean I was about to pass it all to you. I'm, like, losing my mind here. I can't talk and try to do this at the same time. <laughs> That's okay, I can do it. I have a system and it's pretty yeah, quick. Yeah. <sighs> I haven't messed it up yet. Um... But I want more decks. I, I want more decks. I want to make... Actually, I, I before I want more decks, I want to start playing Science Project with uh, all these different half decks now. And I see why they gave us a starter and a booster. I see why now. Because they're like, oh, after you play that, you're going to want to start mixing up um, other stuff. Where is Oros? What did I do here? Yeah, so definitely... Yeah, definitely boosters. But yeah, like all the talk I was saying at the beginning, like I'm, I'm honest about that. This game, the graphic design, the art looks a little amateurish. It feels very 90s. The card, uh, you know, even the mats, like everything feels kind of like a little bit amateur. This is definitely not the same production level as something like Flesh and Blood, where like the graphic design on that, like that is, the, you know, the new classic TCG. They're going for the same idea of like trying to, you know, Go, go for the old school Magic the Gathering player, but Flesh and Blood, like the art in that game, the graphic design, the like, oh, I don't know. That game's like on another level. I do like the art in this game, though. It's fun. I like it. It's uh... fine. But I'm telling you, like, like, even some of the FFG, like Magali art and stuff, even some of the Keyforge art, like, this is more like on the level of Epic and Keyforge, it reminds me of. More of like, it doesn't take itself serious. It's craziness. It's It's wild. 
That's what this game is going for. This is going for wild, kind of crazy, swingy, big, splashy effects, like Epic that we've played before, and like Keyforge. Mm. That's what this feels more to me. Flesh and Blood, that feels more of like a more mature yeah. kind of like, and it's one-on-one -on -one kind of fight. You know, I know there are ways to get like the whole dragon thing and stuff in there, but, um, but yeah. So again, coming out to retail from my understanding, at least that I can find at local retailers. Uh, Matthew, let's, let's answer that question because I, I don't know. Yeah, we didn't look at that at the beginning, Matthew. So this is a great question. Let's go on to Board Game Oracle and see what we can find. Uh, uh oh. Am I not spelling it right? Soul Forge? Like S O L? Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Whoops. That's weird. Maybe no one has it in here yet, like but it. stores have. Yeah, I thought I saw it. Yeah, let's just go here. Let's go to Google. I just Google Google. Getting tired. <laughs> Soul Forge Fusion. Uh, Miniature Market has it up for pre order says Mike. Yeah, but why is that site not pulling that stuff in? Incumbent Miniature Market. Oh, Miniature Market there. Up. That's a US, US based site, right? So. So there's a starter set for 20 bucks. On sale. It looks like it's on sale. I don't know. Or like that's their pre order price. I don't buy from this website. I don't know. Okay. And likely, um, likely the booster pack is a little bit cheaper than that. Yeah. Here's one. I know I saw it here in Canada. Okay. Why, why am I in my settings? <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, here here it's uh starter kit is twenty nine ninety five Canadian, booster kit is twenty four ninety five Canadian. So five dollars difference. Okay. Well, Mike says twenty eight starter, oh. twenty four booster at US at Minimark Minch Market. Thank you. That's not terrible. Like to buy a booster back, which is four half decks for twenty five bucks. Yeah, but just I don't know what the new key forge prices are gonna be. That's what you gotta kinda compare it to, right? Because it's right. like Although you get to mix, but you're still just buying like two decks worth of cards in a booster. But, but yes, you can but just mix more for for more variety. A twenty five dollar yeah. purchase is not terrible. But each deck is thirty cards, each half deck or whatever. Mm -hmm. And what's a keyforge deck? Keyforge deck's like thirty three cards or something in it, right? Oh, I don't remember. I feel like it's like, or no, maybe it's more. I guess that's not bad. Yeah, not bad. So Mike says basically six bucks a half deck. Yeah, and Keyforge was like ten to fifteen dollars, depending on where we were buying them from for a full deck, but you couldn't customize it. So these half decks they open up a lot of potential. Mm hmm Yeah, Daniel, exactly. Yeah. I think the same thing. Yeah. I think that's not a bad price. So again, wrapping around, cycling around to the beginning of the stream. Judging a book by its cover, uh, don't do that. Um, but again, this game is not perfect. So I love the gameplay. I love even more what I've seen now from popping open the four new half decks. Now I'm even more intrigued. And I knew I would already like the idea of mixing. I already love the idea of hunting down Keyforge decks to find the perfect pairings of combinations of cards and decks, right? Yeah. I love doing that. I bought so many decks on the secondary market. I bought so many new decks, crack and packs, hunting hunting the cards and the combos or maybe decks I didn't even know I would love the play styles of. Um, that same addiction is here. Like you will hunt, you'll be hunting again. And instead of just chasing that rare or chasing that legendary card for your deck, trying to find a couple copies of it, 
In this game, you're hunting down that like half deck that pairs good with your favorite green deck or your favorite red deck. Or maybe you can find that red deck that has just a little bit better version of that favorite card you're looking for. Because remember, each of these cards, you don't just see the same card again. Each card has mutations on itself. So like I was saying, when I had an assassin before, you can probably find different types of assassins that do different abilities and have different stats. I did, yes. Remember we were talking about, we were talking about it off stream, but the soothing is the heal. Yes. And we had a soothing something. I had a soothing ranger, which ah, did which... the same thing, did a heal, but did something else. Soothing slayer. Yeah, and then this one has a soothing ranger. This one also has no dinosaurs in this green one, where the other Ooh. green one had, or has, well, sorry, one dinosaur, that one I played. And I was hoping that it had more dinosaurs in it. And that's what I want to find, a good dinosaur deck. But that's the thing. If you find, like, a deck that, uh, like, loves beasts, yeah, you know, you find another deck that has some beast support in it and put those two together from another faction. Yep. You know, try to try to either amplify your strengths or fill in your weaknesses. But yes, the addiction can be here. I love the gameplay so far. Again, five or six games. Nope, six or seven games in now, yeah, at least. We played like maybe three seven. today. Yeah, maybe seven we've played now. Anyways, seven games in. Obviously, we just cracked a booster. I would love to mix more and play more of this for sure. I don't feel like I need more cards right now. I definitely feel like there's these cards right here. I could probably play, you know, weekly for like a month easily and play like a couple games a night and keep mixing this up. Here's a question for you. Is this, do these boosters feel like something as maybe like an add on if you're trying to get your shipping up or something like that? Would you, would you use it for something like that? It depends. If I'm going for tournament play, I'm going to be buying like uh, multiple. Yeah. A whole bunch of boosters <laughs> and trying to find the best combo out of those. Yeah, true. And there needs to be an online database where people can start comparing decks and buying and trading and selling. Oh, yeah, Because, you know, that was the best part of Keyforge going on and being like, I'm really looking for a deck that has these cards in it and these cards in this other faction. I don't even kind of care what the third faction has. I'm just looking for these. Mm -hmm. And you can find a whole bunch of them and browse through their cards and all that stuff and figure or, it out. Yeah, people even would uh, want to purchase ones based on the name. Like, I'm yep. looking for ones that have this in the name or this is my partner's name. And, yep. Yeah. But coming from a casual card gamer now that I'm trying to be is not dive too deep in all these games, just stay in like kind of a basic level so I can play them all and just treat them like contained little games. Um, yeah, you could buy like a starter deck and a couple of boosters and you'll have so many options. Like you could yeah. just mix and match and spice it up and change things up and have a cool little two player card game for sure that you could play a whole bunch of times. Obviously, if you can get a player base built up at your local store, you can then go and start trading them, of course. You can start, you know, dabbling and trading and even I go to the same night and be like, here, try this green out. You know, you like it, we can trade. Like, I want to do this. Like, or just, here, borrow these for tonight and try it out. And I'll want to try this one out from you and just, just rent from each other. <laughs> um, but the, here's the problem, though. As much as you can love this game, if you're a player of this game and you want this game to grow, you need to spread the word. You need to take, and I've, I've built local metas, local player groups at multiple stores. I've brought card games into stores and work with the owners at the stores who never knew about the games. And I volunteered my time to go spend nights in there on weeknights, have people come out, post on social media, get people to show up, bring extra product, uh, teach players, lend them my decks, give away decks, uh, you know, have them show up, organize my own tournaments, run the tournaments, bring my own prizing. Then work with the store to make sure they're stocking the product, giving discounts for buying in bulk and all that kind of stuff. Um, just to build a player base. If you don't build a local player base, yeah, you can play with people online. But I think the beauty in this game, and this game will succeed if people are buying physical product too, right? And if, I know you got to buy physical product to scan the decks in, but sometimes people will just kind of like only play online with what they got and, you know, and that's it. But, um... And Anthridge is saying, by the way, the Tabletop Simulator version is awesome, which I will never play Tabletop Simulator. I, they need to get their act together and make a real app. And I will keep saying that. Keyforge needs to do it too. They need to make a real app that has the rules involved, the fiddliness is taken care of, not Tabletop Simulator. I need to be able to play on iOS. I need to be able to play on Android. Get with the times. It's 2022. Tabletop Simulator is not the answer. That's how you demo your game. That's how you develop your game. That's how you work with playtesters globally. That is not how you launch your game saying I have a digital card game and you're showing a craptastic tabletop simulator amateur demo that is trash. And this game will never succeed if they don't get a physical app to clean up this stuff 
and people can play online. Sure, you guys will have fun with your 100 people global meta playing over and over again against the same people. That's fine. But this game will be forgotten about in a year. I promise you. The Kickstarter didn't do gangbusters. We'll see how the retail launch does. But again, people playing in-person card games right now after COVID, we're still having waves of COVID. They're still coming out with booster shots. People aren't really rushing to stores to play in-person card games right now. So if this thing doesn't get its act together and make it as easy as possible for a new player to play this game and linking them to Tabletop Simulator to go download it on Steam and learn how the shortcuts work and deal with the crappy interface from 2002, like that app is so garbage. And yes, if you can't play with people locally, it's a nice alternative but it should not have what has been launched with the game. This game should have came out with a proper app. It didn't the first Soul Forge, wasn't it an app card game? Did it come out on Tabletop Simulator? Is that the way they played that game? Because that's probably why that failed then. But no, they, you need an app like Hearthstone. You need an app like Pokemon. You need an app. Pokemon is only PC still, but you need a way to play this digitally like Magic the Gathering in an official app with official rules, with official player matchmaking, with your decks in the database, you know, with rules, with tournaments, with prizes. I can go on and play Hero Realms or Star oh, yeah. Realms, and they have like weekly tournaments. Remember, I was playing Pokemon oh, yeah. with Chelsea, where I was joining tournaments online, super easy, yeah. trading cards, selling cards. Like, why? Why is it like, why is it not even in a browser based app? Like, you, we're in 2022, and Tabletop Simulator mod is the way you're launching the game. I promise you guys, if this game doesn't have an app within a year, we are not even going to remember what this game is called. Guaranteed. As great as the gameplay is, it needs more. It can't just be a Me Too Keyforge, because Keyforge is still there. There are still metas of Keyforge playing around the world, and they just did a Kickstarter, and it's doing much better than this game's Kickstarter is, and people are hyped for it. And there's a lot of people who don't want to buy on that Kickstarter because they're waiting for retail just to buy more of the decks of the game they've been playing since 2018. So, yeah. And if Keyforge can get an app, this game is just, it's going in the garbage. Like, you know, if I have a proper way to play Keyforge and scan a deck online, like, how do you have QR codes? How do I have QR codes on decks and I can't scan this in and play in an official app on my phone or on my tablet or on my Mac or a PC or whatever? Like, no, I have to go to Steam, get a Steam account. I have to go buy Tabletop Simulator. Yeah, it goes on sale all the time. Still have to buy it. Still have to learn it. Still have to install stuff for it. You don't grow a player base by trying to only pull your players from the Tabletop Simulator player base. That's not good. That's not good. So yes, in a crowded market of two-player card games, like this needs to try to compete with Magic. This needs to compete with Hearthstone. This needs to compete with Keyforge. This needs to compete with every other card game that launched this year, there's like a hundred of them every year. You need to come out right from the gate and do it big. Like we got flesh and blood out there. That's just like destroying things physically. Like who's going to get together to play this game when you have giant tournaments of flesh and blood happening all around the world, physically people in person. And that game is trying to say, screw playing online. We are trying to play in the flesh and blood and that doesn't want to do an app. So you need to have a proper way to play online if you're going to come at it, I think. But yeah, that's just me. That's just me. Yeah, Keyforge was supposed to have an app coming when Fantasy Flight Games said they were going to bring it back after the whole ransomware attack. But then they sold it off to Ghost Galaxy and Ghost Galaxy says, uh, we know it probably needs an app, but we're not worried about that right now. They're just trying to see if they can revive it and get some basic OP going and get the next few sets done and printed. So, but again, if Keyforge doesn't find a digital app, and there's another pandemic wave that causes lockdowns again in a few years or something. How's it going to survive, you know? Like, you ha like, look at Magic now. They don't even do as many physical tournaments because they have a bustling online, you know, infrastructure. There's so many, so many. I think this game is perfect for online too because of the speed of the game. Like, it's very quick. Yep. And this is the thing. So Mike's saying what I'm saying. So I, I like... Mike's agreeing. He says, I usually think you're a bit harsh sometimes, Rob. <laughs> I, I prefer the passion. Passionate. <laughs> I'm not harsh. I'm passionate. Like he's I want honest with what he's thinking. I'm trying to actually give like proper feedback. And I'll put a smiley face on telling you, this is the greatest game ever. Subscribe to my channel. See you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs>
no, I want this game to be better. If, if it's a game I think could be great, I want it to be great, and I want to actually try to steer it in that direction and help out. Yeah, I might be wrong. I might be completely wrong. Maybe this game is going to blow up and do great because, you know, there's 10 people playing on Tabletop Simulator every night. No, it's not going to. They need to sell decks. You need to expand the player base, and you need to get new players playing this game. And they won't be playing this game when you tell them, yeah, you can scan your decks and play online in Tabletop Simulator. That's not the way you do it. Nope. Nope. You need to have an official app. And the other thing is, it, it, what Mike's also saying, no way, Mike says, no way I'm buying this at six bucks a half deck to occasionally play at home. Bingo. So I don't mind, because me, I look at it, I get, I get obsessive, right? I'll buy a ton of decks. And if there's no local player base, I just stop playing because there's no reason to keep buying decks and playing. I always need to strive to play with new people, go to tournaments, try to learn, try to get better. Mm -hmm. That drives me to buy more product. And that drives me to spread the word of the game. That, that strives for me posting on social media, organizing tournaments, spending my time at the local, local board game store, teaching players, giving away decks, you know, posting up signs on their bulletin board, whatever. Going in their discords and trying to find local players to play with. But I'm not going to do that, you know, for a game that, like, I'm kind of embarrassed to, you know, it's like, guys, this was kickstarted and had less than 2,000 people kickstart it. And then, um, yeah, I can't even find pre-orders for it online. And I'm looking. I found two stores that pre-ordered it. Ooh, that's scary. Um, and, yeah, maybe their launch isn't going to be that big. Meanwhile, uh, Keyforge is on Kickstarter, like, overshadowing it. And you have Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Flesh and Blood, all, all doing well and many other CCGs that people are dabbling in. I just feel this is very temporary, as most two-player card games are. Like, in a year, we won't be talking about it, probably. Because what is different here, what is special, other than just upgrading cards and fighting in lanes? But even that's not... The upgrading cards thing is... Yeah. That's, like, all it really has that's different. I can get the swingy craziness stuff, like I said, in Keyforge and Epic. Epic has a full digital app. Epic, the card game, has a full digital app, just nobody plays that game. You won't be able to find players online to play with. Um, but they do organize tournaments and that and stuff too. There are players that play it. I'm just trolling, but it's not a lot. It's not a lot of players. Um, you can tell on just going to social media groups of some of these games. It's like they just don't have enough to survive. We've seen games that are way bigger than this fail, right? So this has potential, but it's not bringing enough new crazy stuff to the table so they got to do everything they do as high a quality and a high level as they can compete with the other games. So I want it to do good, but it's like they got to put some more money into it, I think. But I don't know if that's smart either. Because with so many of these games, like it's so crowded market, they have to stand out. And I don't think it stands out. But I love this freaking game. I love it. But again, I could play Keyforge and probably get the same feels. Exactly. We've done like Keyforge for a while, so yeah, I could. It'll be interesting now to play Keyforge after playing this and see yep. how that feels. And I get the same feels in Epic, except for Epic, it's kind of repetitive when you play with that same starter deck. But they did come out with new stuff to mix in. But then it was slow in the app to get the cards to catch up physically to digital, so the app got kind of boring for me because I was playing with the same cards over and over again. Um, but it still was cool. But this is a good mix. It's still got the crazy stuff. I do love the idea I can choose two half decks. Which probably leads to me buying less decks than I would in Keyforge. Because Keyforge I bought so many to hunt. I don't know why I'd buy as many in this game. But who knows. I don't know. I don't know. But guys, I, at first I thought I was just going to play this game and thought it was another... Cool, it's another card game. But like, I, there is something here and I, I don't know. There's something here I love. I just don't know if it's for everyone, and I don't think it has mass market appeal, to be honest. And again, with an app that you can't, like in today's day and age, you need to have it so I could play this on the phone. I could play it on an uh, iPad. Maybe you can play Tabletop Simulator and an emulator on an iPad now, I don't know, but um, there's still too many hoops to jump through to play it digitally. I'm still waiting for the game where I can scan a QR code, which I think Pokemon did that. But it was only on the PC app, which mm -hmm. was, but it was, that was less, all for that game, you just have to download the app off their website, log in, boom, your whole Pokemon collection's there. Oh, okay. And then you're playing people in tournaments and stuff. It was so, I was like blown away with that one, but it was so old, but it, it was still worked good and looked pretty. And 
kept track of all the rules and the interactions and everything. I feel like we did play that online. Like I learned how to play Pokemon through that app. Yeah. To learn to then teach my daughter how to play it and then buy decks and yeah. play with her. I didn't learn physically first. I learned digitally because it was so easy and free to do that. But this game, like, you know, trying to tell Joe Blow at my local board game store, like, you know, you should play this card game. You just got to play on this tabletop simulator thing on Steam. I don't know. I'm beating a dead horse here, I think. But hopefully they're working on a real app. And they're going to launch that at some point. So I can scan a deck on my phone and start playing on my phone against you. I want to play against you. They want to play against you too. Yep. Yeah, I don't want to play on tabletop simulator though. I refuse. I know a lot of people that refuse to play board games on there. And they play on Tabletopia and Board Game Arena and that kind of stuff. Uh, or in official apps. Like, I love official board game yeah, apps. same. I love okay. Gloomhaven Digital. I love Game of Thrones and Board Game Digital. I even like uh, Fury of Dracula Digital. Oh, it's yeah. fun. Wingspan Digital. Root Digital. Like, there's so many of these games that, like, there's publishers out there that just literally make digital board game adaptations and, and make them look awesome. Like, there's Eternal, the card game. Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering Online. There's so many. They like all the Star Realms and Hero Realms and yep. all those apps. Yep. I love those. Yep. Yeah, Star Realms, Hero Realms, uh, Epic the Card Game. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah. There's so many. Yep. It's too bad. I think they need to make that. They should have put that in the Kickstarter as like a stretch goal or something to oh, raise enough money to make, to an, make an official oh. digital app. I don't think they did that though. That's too bad. Maybe they should do a new Kickstarter. Once the retail launches, if they build enough of a fan base, do another Kickstarter maybe in the spring and see if they can raise enough money for like the next set or something and official digital app. Mm -hmm. And if there's not enough money there, the game's dead in the water. It's dead in the water, guys. I, I don't know. If they're not going to put the money behind it, you can't just put Richard Garfield's name on something and sell it. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. <laughs> so Sandy's bringing up a question. <laughs> Sandy says, I like Radlands because it isn't a collect-a-thon. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem with collect-a-thons as long as I have the money for it. But uh, they're also saying you have it coming up. Yes, we have Radlands scheduled in... On Thursday? Thursday, four nights, three nights. I don't know. Well, it's a Monday, right? I've lost track. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you can schedule a reminder to come see us play Radlands, mm -hmm. which is another two-player card game with lanes. Mm -hmm. With lanes. Uh, interesting. The difference of that game, it's contained. Yes, we have played it. We played it yesterday. Yeah, we played it last night. We played it last night for the first time. Got around to it finally. I've had Radlands for, I don't know, a year, I feel like. But we finally got the Deluxe Edition at Gen Con. Um, but the difference there is Radlands, it is you're sharing and playing off a single deck and it's contained in a box. And it's cool. I like it. But I can see how you could play a lot. And maybe kind of like, it's not a forever game. Because I've learned this. When you have contained games, you know what this compares most to? If you go back and watch our Sorcerer playthrough from the weekend, that is the same thing. It's a, it's, that's more close to this. Sorcerer has the whole thing where you have the four character decks in the box. You yes. have all the half decks, but it's third decks. Third decks, yeah. Third decks, because you're, you're literally drafting from different factions, lineages, and character decks, and you're mashing them together and making th all those half decks or third decks or whatever um, feel different. And then you're fighting in lanes, basically fighting over the battlefield. Yeah. Sorcerer is closer to a contained version of this than Radlands is, I think so. I think just Radlands, similar with the lanes, but yeah. But so is the battlefields yeah. in, in Sorcerer. I think Sorcerer is closer with the whole like, huh, I'm going to pick a, you know, like the picking this is like picking your character in that game. Yeah. And then you get the cards with it and then you mash it together and you play it and it might be a different style. Now take the burn, throw that away, pick the minion half deck, throw it in. Boom. Now I'm playing minion strategy. Yeah, I never thought of that. I think if you like this and you're looking for a contained version, you pick Sorcerer. Um, that's what this is very similar to, in my opinion. Um, but that's a little tighter of a game. This is more swinging wild like Keyforge and like Epic. 
And again, Epic is like that too, like Star Realms, Hero Realms, Epic. Those are like contained games like Radlands. Radlands, you can tell, is definitely inspired by Epic the card game or inspired by Star Realms and these things that are like contained card pool in a small box that is like infinitely replayable, two player, you know, you draft different cards. Every time you play, you're, you're drawing different cards and trying to make different combos work, whatever, but you're mm -hmm. still playing from the same card pool over and over again. Yeah. Eventually at some point you'll get bored of it or you'll want to expand it. That's just the nature of the game, I think. That's just what it, it, you know, what it usually happens. But um, yes, Radlands is very cool. We'll play it on Thursday, but uh, yeah. That's the thing. If you're coming at it from a board gamer perspective, yeah, something like Radlands or Epic the Card Game are better than diving into a CCG because those are meant to be collectible and ever evolving and a meta and podcasts and, you know, you're reading the updates and news articles from a publisher and new launches and new tournaments and celebrations and discords and chatting and hanging out. Radlands doesn't have that. There's no weekly podcast talking about what's good in Radlands this week. Because there there's no changes. There's no changes. So like it's two different audiences. They scratch two different needs. So yes, Radlands is great if you're just looking to play with your wife like I am here, for example, or a friend or whatever, and you just want to jam out a two-player card game, you know, in an hour or less and just battle each other and be competitive and one person wins. That's fine. But I don't know, are there going to be Radlands World Championships where 750 players show up at Gen Con to play each other? No. It, maybe. There could be tournaments. There could be. But this is a whole different world. You guys got to understand, like, I'm looking at this game. You can just play with this here and make it its own contained game. That is possible. I did it with Flesh and Blood. I've done it with other card games before where I just buy a certain amount of stuff, keep it in a box, make some pre-built decks, yeah. and that's the game. We pull it out every couple weeks, every few months till we get bored of it, and we just jam games. But this kind of game, it's collectible. I can see that there could be a tournament scene for it. It could be crazy. Trying to find the half decks to jam together, surprise cards, everyone's decks unique. You don't know how fun it is when you go to a tournament, and I will say it again. The future of tournament play is games like Keyforge and could be this game because of the whole unique deck thing. Mm -hmm. You're not going to play a whole tournament where one third of the players is playing the top meta deck, another third of the players is playing the second meta deck, and then the other third of players is playing the counter to the first meta deck or whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, or trying to counter both those decks, you know? Like deck one is countering deck two, and deck three is trying to counter deck one, and everyone's going and playing rock, paper, scissors, who'd you get paired up against? And did your deck crap on you, or did you get mana screwed, or not top deck the cards you need? And at every game of the day, you're just playing the same few decks over and over again. And then a new set comes out, and you're all just going on the internet, find the new meta in 10 minutes, and then practice with those three decks again and go to the next tournament. That's the problem. Flesh and Blood could have that problem. Like Magic had that problem. Keyforge a little bit, but the whole idea of Keyforge, you go and you know no one had the perfect deck. No one had it, which was awesome. And every matchup, you'd sit down across and you're like, yeah, I'm playing a Shadow Sanctum disc deck again for the third round in a row, but it would always be different. Yeah. Some always crazy stuff would happen. And this has the same potential. This has the same potential. Yes, there could be a meta like you're saying. Everyone has to come and play a red deck. But not every red deck. Maybe it's red burn deck that has these two creatures in it. And this spell has to be in it mm -hmm. to be the meta. But then not everyone's going to find the green deck that pairs good with that sure. meta deck. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, because there is no 100% the same deck. They're all different. Yeah, you could find two decks that are similar, but they're going to have a couple different characters, a couple different stats, a different yeah. version of the, uh, you know, the Colossus. It has like a soothing Colossus instead of an abetting Colossus, whatever. You know, maybe that exists. I don't know. And then it gets crazy when we talk about set number two and set number three and new factions and new, um, new Forgeborn and new abilities and, you know, new game mechanics. But yeah. I love going to Game of Thrones and card game tournaments. I love going to L5R tournaments. I love playing at the Worlds for those games. Uh, Warhammer Conquest Worlds. All, all these worlds. I love going to Minnesota, playing at FFG's headquarters, playing in the Worlds. I love going to Gen Con, playing in like 800 player tournaments. So fun. But literally, when you're in round one, oh, hey, Johnny. Oh, yeah, you're with here with Bob and Jim and Sarah. Oh, yeah, you guys all come from the same city. Oh, are you guys all playing the same deck? Oh, okay, cool. 
you beat that person. Then the next round, you're like, oh, hey, hey, Jimmy, I just played Bob. Oh, oh, wait, you're playing the same deck as them? Okay, here we go again. And then I hope I don't get paired up against this deck that beats my deck. Hopefully I don't. There's a few of them here. You know, it's kind of boring. Um, not as interesting. And especially when you start knowing pairings beat another. Like when I watch Flesh and Blood tournaments, and I'm like, oh, we get to the top eight. Oh, too bad this, this uh, hero got paired with this hero. You know 100% of the time this hero beats that hero. Yeah. 100% of the time. So it's like, I'm just going to go fast forward through this or watch another. It's live. I'm going to go do something else and come back because this match is like a waste of my time. Yeah. Like it, you just got paired and the, the matchups don't work. Like there's no answer. But yeah, this game, I don't know. It could have that problem, but I, I like this idea better where nobody can like have the perfect deck. I don't know. It's like the Wild West at the tournaments. Mm -hmm. And again, Richard Garfield like described that. When you described Keyforge, he's like, when I designed Magic the Gathering, there was no internet. And basically, it wasn't a popular thing. So uh, he was hoping that by releasing all these booster packs that were all random, and everyone buying different booster packs, they would all have different collection of cards, and they would all come up in, with their... Oh, with their own their wizarding, decks? Yeah, their wizarding minds would come up with their own concoctions. And then you'd go to a tournament and be Wild West. Oh, that's cool. It's like being in the jungle, and you just find a rock and a stick and uh, some mud and try to make it work. Yeah. And then go fight your buddy. And then he found some grass and a, you know, a frog and whatever. And he's gonna, you're gonna battle. Let's do this. This is my weapons I got. That's all I have. Yeah. And that's what Keyforge was trying to solve. Is that everyone? The problem was once the internet got big, then everyone just a new Magic Gathering set comes out. Everyone solves it in two minutes, and then you just play the best deck or the one that counters it. Right, right. And it's, it's a snooze, not as fun. It's a snooze fest. Keyforge, you're just here's the decks, guys. They're all the decks are randomly generated. You can't mess with them. So, hey, welcome to the jungle. Here's your tools. Make, it, make work. it work. I love it. And that's why Sealed in that game is so good. Because yeah, I like you, it better. Yeah, you just crack a deck and you're like, oh, crap. This is what I got? Let's try to make it work. Yeah. And that's what can happen here. Imagine draft, like, imagine cracking a booster in this and you have four half decks and you're like, pick one to run through the tournament with. Yeah, that'd be cool. I Amazing. Think. I think that'd be cool. Try it one time. It's so fun. There's a lot of people who are like, no, I, I can't give up the control of Picking every single card in my deck. I can't give that control. No, you got to try it, man. It's so liberating, so fun to try to make it work. I love it. I love it. I only like it if everybody's playing sealed. Obviously. That's the only way it's fun. Obviously. <laughs> no one comes with like random deck and whatever. But I have seen people show up for Keyforge tournaments who are like, I've never played Keyforge yeah. today. And the store owner's like, Rob, I have a new player here before you guys start. And yeah. the guy literally buys a deck off the shelf, comes and sits down with that deck and plays with us. And yeah, of course, not the same play level. Exactly. But he's learned the game, having fun. He's playing in the tournament. We boom, we got another player to the player base. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I got to be able to do that with this game, or it's dead in the water. We'll see. Daniel says that's why I prefer casual commander. Matthew says that's cool. I have never played in a unique card game tournament other than sealed MTG. And yeah, nice. that's that's similar. That is similar. But you still have control. And that's yeah. Love control. But that's why I like the Keyforge one is and that's why I think this one would be good with like here's a booster, open it, and then you out of the four, pick your two you're combining and run with it. Yeah. And between rounds you can switch if you want. And the Keyforge did it really good when it was like, here's three decks. Choose. Choose during the tournament. And here's your three decks, you register them, and then you can only choose from those for the tournament. Yeah, that's cool. Good luck. I love it. I love it. It's just so fun. It's so fun. It just makes more dynamic, interesting games. And yes, some games are blowouts. It happens. It's a card game. You're drawing yeah. from a deck. Sometimes yeah. you just don't draw what you need. It doesn't matter. But yeah, very fun. Anyways, holy crap, this stream went on long. <laughs> this stream went on long. But yeah, it's a cool game, guys. It's fun. Uh, you have to play it, though. And again, you have options. You can play on Tabletop Simulator if you're not, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, um, I don't know. If you enjoy Tabletop Simulator. Yeah, if you're not like me and are like anti-Tabletop Simulator, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people aren't. But well, I think more people are than aren't. Yeah, but you can go pull, try this game on Tabletop Simulator. It's releasing supposedly September 22nd in stores. So you can supposedly go check with your local retailer, support your local game store, see if they can pre-order you a few boxes or whatever, or a box. Buy a starter set. Like less than $30 or whatever. 
And uh, yeah, just buy a starter kit. And uh, with that starter kit, you can um, get four decks to start playing against somebody with. And then you can switch the half decks and try out other things. Or you can scan them in to your online database and then go play on Tabletop Simulator against other people with them. And go join the Discord. That's on soulforgefusion.com. There's links for all that stuff. I've linked, I've linked the, the website down below. Go to Soulforge Fusion. You can go watch videos about the rules. Go watch games, all that kind of stuff. Go in the Discord. Find players to play with online. Somebody will probably teach you the game too. And uh, you can try it out. But uh, you have to try it before you knock it like I was. I was like literally like... <laughs> How's this game going to compete with anything? Look what they're doing. This is this doesn't even look that great. Like the lane stuff. Okay. Upgrading cards. Oh, that's so weird. That's it's not going to be great. You got to try it though. It, it's before you, before you knock it. Um, cause yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by it and I'm kind of hooked. I'm kind of hooked and I need more, but yeah, just check it out. I like, don't even buy anything. Just go on tabletop simulator. If you play on there, if you already play on Tabletop Simulator and you're playing board games on there, go find the mod for this game, install it, and see if you can jam some free games on there or something. I'm sure somebody can help you out on there too. Just go check the Discord. Just try it. You, yeah, you might like it. Maybe you don't, but like, yeah. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm intrigued. Super fun. More fun than I expected it to be. More fun than I expected it to be. Daniel says, get a starter and four boosters, roll a d20 to choose half decks. Yeah, that's what we should do in the next stream. No problem, Chad. Thank you for watching, everybody. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, again, thank you to everyone who supports us on Patreon and YouTube, allowing us to do this stuff, and uh, we appreciate it. Thanks again to the folks over at Stoneblade Entertainment uh, for giving us a starter, two mats, and a booster at Gen Con uh, for us to check out. I appreciate it. Um, thank you. And yeah, hopefully they make a real digital app in the future. I hope so. I hope so. I would play it. Yep. Yep. I would too. I would too, for sure. Mm -hmm. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Share the video. Hit the like button. Helps other people find it on YouTube. Uh, the more likes. Again, if we made any rules, mistakes, or you have any thoughts or comments, you want to call me crazy. I am crazy, I know. I'm very passionate. I'm very passionate. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I turn some of you guys off, but um, that's what I do here. Uh, <laughs> so uh, feel free to drop in the comments below and let me know like let me know why I'm wrong let me know what I missed let me know what's really good about the game why you love it why you hate it why you think it's trash why it won't succeed I'm curious also what's your favorite color is red OP yeah is red really OP if you played a whole bunch of decks is red OP <laughs> hashtag is red OP is red OP or just our <laughs> reds OP I don't know or maybe maybe our blue is weak and our green is weak and our purple is weak and red is just really OP and our decks I don't know but yeah I'd be curious to know but yeah thank you all for watching um and yeah we'll see you guys in the next stream we're back Tuesday playing Star Wars uh villainous Wednesday 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 playing Star Wars villainous 6 30 p.m you can check out youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. Check out the playlist section. Check out upcoming streams. Check all our other games out. Uh, we've been playing a lot of these two-player or competitive games lately. Checking them all out. Um, just seeing what's out there and catching up on some things. If you're looking for Radlands, which people are comparing this to a little bit, uh, we will be playing that on Thursday. It's already scheduled. You can set a reminder for that. Um, and on the weekend, we're back playing Osworn, continuing our campaign and our campaign of Jurassic world legacy of isla nublar spoiler alert for that one too uh, and old sworn um back to playing the campaigns on the weekends and yeah that's all i got for you guys <laughs> mike says you're most likely 100 right rob the game is screaming for a real app for obvious reasons yes i like i just didn't make sense to me i thought for sure there was a real app and then when i looked it scans the deck and it says play it online it even says like scan your deck somewhere in the rule book or something or online I was reading. It's like scan your deck to play it online. And I think then, in the rule book too, yeah. Yeah, then I click it and it's like tabletop simulator. This is not the online I'm looking for. What is this? <laughs> this has to be temporary. Anyways, yeah. I know Matthew's saying I'm gonna go watch some Keyforge vids here. Yeah. We, Remember I, that they're old. Yeah, they are older. <laughs> they're back from 2018, 2019. Uh all our Keyforge stuff Moni's from. But we do need to play Keyforge again. Yeah. Stay tuned. 
stay tuned. I'm going to try to get some Keyforge on the channel in the next couple weeks. Hopefully. Hopefully. Too many games, not enough time. I know. Isn't that crazy? Too many games, not enough time. But hopefully soon. Anyways, thank you all for watching again for the 18th time. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next stream. Bye. Bye, -bye.